Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. We'll call the meeting to order. Mr. Turner, I think you have the honor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jim. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day, this cold, dreary, wet day. Let us be glad in it. We, uh, we thank you also that we have the freedom to gather as a community to celebrate heroes and to consider publicly and openly the important issues of the day. I pray that the commissioners and those present in the room approach these, de these deliberations and these issues with a clear head and a servant's heart. Amen. 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 You stand with me for the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Haygood, I think we have the honor of, and I see a lot of uniforms, that's really great. <laughs> we welcome everyone, and especially those in uniforms. Uh, Mr. Haygood, let me come down and we'll do this together. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, we're very pleased to have lots of folks from the Alamance County Sheriff's Office with us today in various capacities to be recognized for uh, He's serious. their performances. Yeah. So. That dog is serious. Oh you don't mess around that thing. And I've been told by our legal counsel, everybody, do not touch the dog. <laughs> <laughs> so at this time, uh, ladies wow. and gentlemen, we'd like to recognize K-9 Officer Grimm and Sergeant Mike Apple of the Alamance County Sheriff's Office. K-9 Officer Grimm reported for duty at the Alamance County Sheriff's Office in March of 2012. Grimm is a cross between a German Shepherd, Belgian Malinois, and is 12 years old. Officer Grimm's service to the citizens of Alamance County has not gone unnoticed. Sergeant Apple once received a call from a fellow deputy advising that a male subject walked off from his home threatening suicide. Officer Grimm tracked the male and located him as he was attempting to hang himself. Sergeant Apple and Officer Grimm were called late one evening to help locate a person who overdosed on his medication. Sergeant Apple was told that if the patient could not be found, he would likely die. The patient left on foot into the woods. Officer Grimm started tracking and found the patient who, was, who then was treated on scene by EMS and taken to the hospital. Over Officer Grimm's 10 years of service, he was responsible for numerous narcotic seizures, including large amounts of cash for the Alamance County Sheriff's Office and surrounding agencies, resulting in an untold amount of arrests. In his retirement, Officer Grimm will provide private security for Sergeant Apple's wife and three children <laughs> and will enjoy some much deserved relaxation. <laughs> On behalf of Alamance County Government, we thank you, Officer Grimm, for your service and we hope you enjoy your retirement. <laughs> All right. He said, Thank you for your many years of faithful and devoted service, May 2012 uh, to December 2021. Is his retirement, and uh, he will be living with Sergeant Apple. And I'm telling you, that is one heck of a dog. He has found so much drugs, weapons, track people, and stuff. He will be missed. And thank you, Sergeant, for your efforts in looking after him. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. <laughs> so, the Board of Commissioners and ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we'll be presenting life-saving awards to numerous officers uh, and deputies from the Alamance County Sheriff's Office. We begin with Deputy Joseph Kerr. On November 29, 2021, communications dispatched Deputy Joseph Kerr to an unknown medical call on Highway 87. While en route, communications advised that an individual was located in the vehicle unconscious. Once Deputy Kerr arrived, he was able to locate the vehicle, secure the firearm, and 
placed the unresponsive mail on the ground to administer Narcan. The Sheriff's Office would like to thank Deputy Care for his quick response that saved this individual's life. Congratulations, Deputy. <laughs> recognition of your actions that resulted in a life saved on November 29, 2021. Thank you for your yes, service, sir. young man. Thank you. Appreciate yes, it. It's an honor to have yes, you on board. Yes, sir. Officer Stewart, Bosley, and Cobb. You see yours. You got Cobb on there. I think I've got Cobb. Nope. On the November 20th, 2021, Detention Officer Scott Stewart and Detention Officer Jeffrey Bosley responded to an inmate who was unresponsive. Officer Stewart immediately began chest compressions while Officer Bosley tilted the inmate's chin up in an effort to clear his airway. Detention medical nurses arrived and began checking the inmate's vitals. Officer Stewart and Sergeant Christopher Cobb continued chest compressions until EMS arrived at the scene and transported the inmate to the hospital. These three officers were instrumental in working together to save this inmate's life, and the sheriff's office would like to recognize and thank them for their efforts. He is not here, but I'll be accepting on his behalf. This guy is here. The ones who are you don't need this one. Oh my god. No, you don't. No? Okay, never mind. Officer Albajali and Officer Beckham. On November 22nd, 2021, Detention Officer Tariq Albajali was making his rounds and came across an inmate who was unresponsive and turning blue. He immediately began performing chest compressions. Detention Officer Madison Beckham immediately arrived and attached an AED defibrillator to the inmate. After discharging the AED, both officers switched off administering CPR until the inmate regained a pulse. EMS arrived and transported the inmate to the hospital. The inmate survived because of Officer Abajali's and Officer Beckham's quick response and training. Approximately 20 minutes later, Officer Abajali came across another inmate and immediately began performing CPR. Unfortunately, the inmate never regained consciousness. The Alamance County Sheriff's Office would like to publicly recognize these officers with a special recognition for Officer Abajali and his attempt to save two inmates in one night in the detention center. The dedication to their job and commitment to those entrusted in their care deserves recognition. Thank you. <laughs> On November 24, 2021, an inmate assaulted a female sergeant and locked the officer inside a cell. He then assaulted a second officer when he tried to run away. Nurse Kelly Boswell immediately intervened without hesitation and put herself in danger, helping to stop the inmate from hurting anyone else. In these types of situations, many officers may not react quickly, but Nurse Boswell displayed the ability to think quickly and react to a stressful situation. In addition, she helped by providing medical assistance to those that were injured that day. On behalf of the Sheriff's Office, we would like to commend and thank her for her actions. Thank you, Nurse Boswell. Thank you. 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 Uh, the inmate had attacked one of our detention officers, busted her head, and uh, he tried to escape. Our lieutenant caught him. They were wrestling on the ground, and she come and uh, put a foot in the matter. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The sheriff sounds like she ought to be wearing a badge. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to recruit her. Uh, okay, and lastly, yeah. um, Holland, Rice, and Hutt. Time. <laughs> we going one at a time? 
property. Yeah, what? I know, I'll only come over here. Yeah, you go, hold, hold your own. <laughs> on January 20th, 2022, Deputy Alexis Holland and her field training officer, Corporal Connor Rice, responded to the community shell station on South NC 87 Highway in reference to an unconscious person. Once on the scene, they found the patient unresponsive with no pulse and agonal breathing. Corporal Rice and Deputy Holland immediately began performing CPR until Deputy Ethan Hutt arrived and administered Narcan. All three deputies continued to perform CPR until EMS arrived. The patient regained consciousness soon after he was in the ambulance. EMS paramedics expressed that the patient survived due to the quick response and actions of Corporal Rice, Deputy Holland, and Deputy Hutt. The Sheriff's Office is grateful for how these officers handled this situation. Congratulations, deputies. I would like to say and it's, it's an honor to have you three officers along with these other officers working for me at the Alamance County Sheriff's Office. You are what that badge stands for. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Madam Clerk, are there any public speakers? All right, thank you. I assume there are no commissioner's responses to new speakers. <laughs> well, I'd like to make a comment. I know uh, Commissioner Thompson and I happen to be at Officer Grimm's retirement, and I have to say he was he, he's a great big teddy bear when he was up. No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> I will not touch him. <laughs> he was a sweet. He Beautiful. Was a sweet we do know that both commissioners have all hands. Oh, all hands and all fingers still in the I wasn't going to touch that tennis ball. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Do we have a, um, a motion for the approval of the agenda? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We now have the consent agenda. A motion to approve. Second. Any comment? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Unanimous on both votes. Thank you. Are you going to recognize uh, the next item? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. We have an update about NC Works uh, today from Ms. Tammy Wall, of workforce, the Workforce Development Director. Tammy is with us this morning. Yes, right here. And we also have uh, other folks in attendance who can speak to what Tammy's uh, going to talk about, Dr. Gatewood. And I believe we have Reagan Girl available via Zoom. Is that correct, Bruce? From the Chamber of Commerce. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We really appreciate the opportunity to appear today on behalf of the Regional Partnership for Workforce Development. We coordinate the activities of five NC Works Career Centers, Alamance, Orange, Randolph, Moore, and Montgomery County. We are a grassroots organization working close to the ground to assist job seekers and help them improve their skills development. We serve employers to fill job vacancies and we provide training for their employees. We are opposed to the governor's proposal to realign all North Carolina workforce development boards into prosperity zones where these services could be taken outside of Alamance County. We have several community members here to express their feelings but first, I would like to call on Tammy Wall, Director, 
of our Workforce Development Boards to share her thoughts with you. Okay. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Randy. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. At the request of our Governor Roy Cooper, the NC Works Commission, which is the State Workforce Development Board, and its Governance and System Alignment Committee have begun a realignment and redesignation study of the local workforce development boards. Many of those proposals already presented by the NC Works Commission and NC Commerce show the consolidation of workforce development boards into eight mega reason, regions known as prosperity zones, which are an arbitrary grouping of counties. This would effectively eliminate any local control or local decision making on key workforce issues. Local control equals local decisions, which equals local solutions. The current structure for local workforce development boards in North Carolina allows this to happen. This cannot and will not happen in a prosperity zone or mega region. Locally nominated and locally approved workforce development board members already make great decisions that help improve our communities. Maintaining local control and decisions regarding our NC Works Career Centers. Each local workforce development board determines how many NC Works Career Centers are needed in a local area, what services are to be provided locally, how the NC Works services are integrated with other organizations in their communities, how the centers are staffed, and what the projected outcomes for service to career seekers and employers. This cannot be done in a mega region where the decisions regarding the NC Works Career Center in a large metropolitan area are completely different from a smaller or more rural county in the region. Regarding reducing the boards to align with prosperity zones, thus creating these large mega regions, this was seem to be a system that reduces local control, input, involvement, and gives it to the larger, larger jurisdictions and population centers. We believe the larger jurisdictions in a region, such as Charlotte, Raleigh, would give the lion's share of the resources and everyone else would get the crumbs. This would have a very negative impact on our rural communities. Reducing the number of workforce development boards would significantly reduce the total number of private and public sector board members who currently have local input resulting in local decision making and locally driven solutions. With our current 23 workforce development boards in North Carolina having an average of 20 or more locally appointed board members, which is just under 500 local voices, but with mega regions, this would equal just over 160 voices. Currently, all 23 workforce boards are led by private sector chairperson and the composition for the local boards requires that 51% of the local workforce development board represent the private sector. Eliminating or reducing boards across the state will simultaneously also reduce the number of well-informed and engaged private sector representation. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners. I'm Reed LaPlante. I am the 2022 Alamance Chamber Board Chair. On behalf of our President Reagan Gorell and the rest of the Alamance Chamber, I'd like to thank you for allowing us the opportunity to join you this morning. The Alamance Chamber values the work of the Regional Workforce Development Board and the Alamance County NC Works Career Center. We understand that the significant impact of our regional and local partnerships. The Alamance County NC Works Career Center is a strategic partner in workforce development, playing a vital role in economic prosperity for all of Alamance County. I have outlined key initiatives that both impact our citizens and our local employers. For our citizens in the last 12 months, the local career center has served 8,039 individuals through almost 83,000 services. The Alamance County NC Works Career Center was one of the first locations in North Carolina to reopen amidst the pandemic due to the high demand and need from our citizens. This was a significant resource for the people, especially with the digital divide throughout our county due to limited access to internet in some communities. The Im impact to our employers over the last 12 months is that they had 6,137 services that were provided to local employers throughout the Career Center. The Alamance County NC Works Career Center hosted monthly job fairs outdoors to ensure employers could safely connect with potential employees. This is just one of the innovative approaches our local Career Center has taken to fill jobs. As of Friday, February 4th, there were 209 job orders with 3,340 openings in Alamance County. It is essential to ensure that we have properly staffed local branch 
to manage the need from our citizens and to assist our employers to fill these jobs. The Alamance County Chamber understands the importance of local access. Currently, the Alamance County NC Works Career Center is located just a few steps from two link transit stops, which enhances equitable access for all of our citizens and limits travel time and transportation costs. With the unknown impact to our local NC Works Career Center, I come to you today on behalf of the business community. The Alamance Chamber asks that you consider the resolution opposing the realignment policy. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity today to speak about the Regional Partnership Workforce Development Board and its connection to Alamance Community College. And state your name, please. I'm Connie Wolf, Executive Vice President of the college. Um, the NC Works Career Center uh, works with ACC and the Regional Partnership Workforce Development Board to provide services and support for students at Alamance Community College. Uh, WIOA training dollars are used to sponsor students training at ACC, including supportive services such as paying for childcare, uniforms, and testing fees, in addition to other um, extra fees that students may incur. Additionally, uh, the Workforce Development Board has sponsored many students in paid internship, internships on campus, which we call work-based learning, to gain real-world work experience to support their classroom training and credentials. Our continuing education offices continually and regularly route students to the um, Career Center uh, to help them advance their goals as well. So the college supports the Workforce Development Board in the work that it is doing and, and supporting our student success. I think Dr. Gatewood might speak briefly to um, the Workforce Board's excellent work with the Finish Line Grants. Thank you. Thank you. I've already had, good morning, Mr. Morning. Chairman, members of the commission. Dr. Wolf just gave me my orders when she said speak briefly. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure that you can appreciate that. <laughs> I d this is what I know about the Workforce Development Board they have been an excellent um, partner with Alamance Community College. It's kind of like a hand in a glove. It's been a really good fit. I've been in the position I am now for over eight years. I'm actually in my ninth year. And each of those years, we've had nothing but excellent uh, working relationships with the board. As Dr. Wolf just mentioned, we have students who benefit. They invest in those students financially. Therefore, they invest in this community. I also know that when we decentralize, it is often good because we get down to the grassroots level. And when it comes to workforce development, as was indicated earlier, our needs here in this county could be very different from some county a distance from here. So this region has sort of a similar uh, appetite in terms of workforce development and jobs. So I think that the way that it is structured now with the Workforce Development Board works for us. Uh, you know, as they say, the devil is in the details. So, you know, we talk about change. Sometimes change is good, but we really need to know what's in the weeds in order to understand what the field is going to look like once the crop is ready to be harvested. So I want to be very careful about my position today. I don't want to knock what is proposed, but I do want to support what we have. And what we have is good. There is one theory that says if it's not broken, break it. Well, I think that's a crazy theory. <laughs> so um, your attention to this matter and consideration of the resolution would not only be appreciated, I'm sure, by the Workforce Development Board, Tammy and her group, by uh, Alamance Community College, but by those people in the community here that we serve. And also, I'm going to close on the note that and I want to make sure you're very, very clear. She mentioned what her title was, but I want to reemphasize uh, re that, and that's Dr. Connie Wolf is our Executive Vice President here at Alamance Community College. She's also a member of the Workforce Development Board, so I know as long as she is on that board providing leadership, we don't have to worry about anything so thank you very much thank you thank you while you're still standing there dr wolf did you come back up with him we have in our packet a resolution 
which we're suggesting as county commissioners in this resolution that the modification not be made made by the governor uh, that we stay as it is currently. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. All right. Would you go into a little more detail about the resolution itself? Would you sure. like to speak uh, to that? Sure. Um, uh, I know that, and, and Tammy may, may ask Tammy to speak to that as well, but um, it is asking for your support to, um, I, I, as I understand it, the local board of commissioners, the governor cannot make any changes without your, your approval. So your approval in this matter is absolutely critical to the regional workforce, uh, regional partnership continuing to exist. So therefore, if we pass this, we're voting to leave it as it is. Yes. Yes, sir. I want to make sure everybody is clear on that. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Do we have any insight into the uh, decisions have, having been made by our sister counties? Mm -hmm. Not yet. Yeah, maybe you may have that. I The email that I sent each of you has already been sent to the other four counties as well. Mm -hmm. um, my executive director, who um, my physical entity is in Randolph County, so she has worked with the county commissioners there. We have not, you are the first county that we have presented the resolution to. Okay. Um, we have presented to Montgomery County, and we will be sending that um, resolution this week. Um, we have not yet received word from Moore or Orange about presenting to their commissioners. I do know that they have a closed session this evening, and that is on the agenda. Okay. okay. My understanding is, right now, we're the big fish in the pond. You are. If we go to this realignment, we'll have Wake County, Guilford County, we'll be the little fish right. in the big ocean. Is that right. correct? Right. Mm -hmm. And, and deci decisions are typically... Um, you know, they're just, they're just decided on the lion's mm -hmm. share of, of resources, which we feel like some of our communities could be left out. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? Yes. Why is the reason Governor Cooper has wanted to do this change? I've heard about, I agree with you totally, but I'm not hearing about why he all of a sudden decided this. So as Workforce Board Directors, we are um, not 100% sure what we were hearing was that it may have to do with whether workforce boards were working together with economic development, particularly the Economic Development Partnership of North Carolina. And I will say that we do work with them uh, strongly. Um, the thing with economic, the EDPNC folks are, you know, they're doing a lot of recruitment uh, in bringing companies here and expanding companies. And workforce development is not involved in that process. If you're familiar with a lot of their projects, they have secret code names, such as Project Avocado uh, type things. So um, we, we're involved in, in that when usually our EDPNC folks are reaching out to our local economic development folks. And then the local economic development folks bring in workforce development to do letters of <coughs> reference or support letters offering our funding for training, incumbent worker grants for our employers, um, on the job trainings for new hires. Uh, so we do a letter of support for what we are able to commit. But we do partner with economic development. It's just not at, we're not at the table all the time because our role is not that. Well, I know when we were doing the um, School of Excellence, Dr. Bill Harrison and I, with the board people from Board of Education and <coughs> Workforce was there and they played an instrumental role mm -hmm. in the, the collaboration with the community college and even starting as far as, you know, upcoming high school yes, students. Yes, we are at the table with all our career accelerator program, which is, yeah. you know, our youth apprenticeship program. And I am currently in um, conversations with ACC on the development of some adult apprenticeships as well. Yes. So, mm -hmm. so we, we, we have the best relationships I feel like in all of our counties but with our community colleges with our chambers mm -hmm. and with our businesses we support them in many um, ways offering grants to upskill their current workforce and as well as doing customized training through the community college and we partner with Dr. Gatewood and his staff on those customized trainings for employers thank you you're welcome I have no questions. Thank you for your presentation. Really. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. I have, okay. Would it be fair to say if we vote for this resolution, we largely stay in control of our destiny? If, on the other hand, we do not, 
we're handing that over to Raleigh. You're handing it to someone else, yes. Thank you. Well, I do have one quick question, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman. I'm sorry. How do you receive your funding currently? Does that come directly from the state? Um, if you, it comes from the federal government. It okay. comes to the state through the governor, through the Division of Workforce Solution. And technically, on the map, it says it shows that it comes to the county commissioners, and your county commissioners appoint the boards to manage those funds. So right. we're staffed to the board, so we get our funding every July one. And it, those are federal dollars through what we call the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. Do we know if there's any danger of if we if we reject this option that we lose funding? No. Okay. No. Right, thanks. And Mr. Thank Chair, just so you know, and so the folks at Workforce Development know, I did make some minor edits to the initial resolution to clarify it some. Thank you. Just so you have, have that knowledge. Okay. But I, I didn't that. change the overall content of what the mission was for it. Perfect. Thank you. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank Any you. Any opposed? It's therefore unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I don't see Mr. Thorpe, but I do see him now. <laughs> Sorry. He's a Baptist. He's on the back row. <laughs> <laughs> he always tries to hide the back row. I sit behind Steve Carter in church. That's <laughs> right. So Steve's not quite in the back. Uh, Pam's right in the front. I can tell you where everybody's at every Sunday. Uh, I heard from a Baptist minister that therefore you're required to eat a lot of chicken. Is that correct? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I didn't get like this just sitting there looking at it. <laughs> Chicken's gotten real expensive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good morning, everyone. Uh, if I look a little sleepy, it's just not because I've been worried about the meeting, but been up since 3.30 looking at this beautiful sunshine we're having. <laughs> uh, shooting the road. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Shooting the roads. They were actually 29 degrees and 30 degrees as you got into mm -hmm. the uh, wow. northern part of the county. The bridges were slick. Uh, the rest of it was pretty good, but if you tapped your brakes, you did go straight through the bridge. So led us to make a call this morning is always difficult for us okay so I know we've talked about this at several different or I've had several different opportunities to mention and discuss this uh, but I'm bringing back before you the top 10 unfunded projects uh, I know we've talked a little bit about the sales tax reserve sales tax funds a uh, couple reasons one you know as time goes on these projects get worse uh, two, it seems like we have funding at this point to do some of them, as well as have some reimbursement opportunities for three of them. Uh, I would, I would, I would suggest that we focus uh, back at Howe River. Uh, both projects at Howe River, uh, Graham High School, Southern High School, and then uh, for roofing projects, and then AO, AW, and EM Holt uh, for the traffic projects. I have sent those out for design, so we would have design, so once funds are available, we can get started. Uh, just to give the board an update to Woodlawn's roof that we approved back in May, uh, we are receiving bids tomorrow. Uh, that's unfortunately, and everybody blames it on COVID, but for some reason, it feels like things are taking longer to get through the hands of the folks that have got to get through. Uh, I will say our folks have been very responsive getting out doing the work as far as the work the boots on the ground but uh, some of the other stuff has been fairly slow so we're hoping for a bid day tomorrow and hoping for a good bid day uh, if not we'll do some value engineering I think I, I sort of knock on wood I always say that I'm scared to say that too loud I do try to keep projects in budget and bring them in under budget even if we have to do some value engineering those particular projects, I'm going to jump back, um, is 7.9, almost $8 million for that group of projects. So, any questions? Uh, I do. Okay, sure. You want me to go first? No, let's go. You want me to go first? Mr. Turner, you'll be sure. Could be, could be a while. <laughs> Go ahead, I'll, I'll follow up. It could be a while. <laughs> Don't beat me up too bad. No, sir. I'm just going to ask you some questions. Sure. Uh, just just for uh, the public, uh, so we know 
the public has an idea of what we just just so we don't know. Sure, sure. I, I'm, I'm just I, I you know me. It's all good. Okay. Uh, I just want to ask you, um, where do these funds come from that are in this uh, fifteen point nine million dollar uh, account? I'm going to defer to you, the county, since it comes in through the county. So these are a combination of funds that come from property tax, specifically dedicated to the school system. I believe it was 5.64 cents of property tax increase that was done in the 1920 fiscal year. Some of the 12, uh, 15.9 million is from property tax. Some is also from sales tax. Specific articles of sales tax that the state requires the county spend on uh, uh, school capital. So uh, the school system's debt service annual pay go and capital reserves are made up primarily of those funds uh, some of the debt service is also paid by lottery but these these funds and capital reserve in this capital reserve are not lottery funds it's sales tax dollars property tax dollars property tax specifically for ABSS excellent thank you so much I appreciate that and I know the uh, I've had just had a lot of questions like okay. how does it how does a school system get this kind of money and you just explained it. Yes. Uh, the school system has several buckets out there for sales tax that come in there. I think it's number 39 and 40. Yes. And uh, that's how this account has gotten to where it's at. And I applaud the fact that now that you have, you know, I asked Mr. Haygood, it's, I love people who save. I'm a big saver myself. Mm -hmm. But what are you saving for? And this is a great idea. I, I'm Correct. really glad that you're taking the initiative here to uh, knock out these things because I know. We have been looking at this for a while, and I'm glad you're, you're attacking it. That's good. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, my second question is, or uh, Mr. Hager may have to answer this as well, or the finance. <laughs> uh, where are these funds outside of the audit that we're waiting on? Are yes. these funds outside of the audit that we're waiting on? They are included in the audit. Thank you. We have a separate schools capital reserve fund, one for the ABSS as well as one for ACC, and okay. they are both represented in the audit. Excellent. And in no close, we're no closer to that audit, are we? We are. Sweet. I love you. I love you. <laughs> now I can sleep at night. The stock we, market doesn't keep me up. No. This does. We have received a compliance supplement. Excellent. And they are Excellent. currently working on it. I'm extremely happy. Yeah. Yeah, just because it's going to make our numbers very firm and we'll know what we're dealing with. Yes. Okay. Uh, I know this is going to be a, a crazy question, but someone asked me this sure. and I told them I would ask it. Can these funds be reimbursed to the county? The funds that are in this capital reserve could they be returned to the county? So I, I say the, I said no, but I said I would ask. I don't, and I don't think it would be proper. And with our project list that we've had that we've looked at with our capital plans and stuff, we have a lot of needs that sure. we need to continue to push forward on. I think we've done a great job in the last you know three to four years of knocking out a lot of big issues mm -hmm. in our school yeah. systems. Yep, I agree. Okay, now this is going to be a crazy question, and I would like to hear some, maybe some responses from my fellow commissioners. Could it be, and I'm looking forward here, I'm looking at your $19.5 million debt that you're looking at at the bond door, so that's all I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. Is it possible for these funds, $19.5 million, could this be used for to help fulfill some of the obligations that you have sitting at the bond door. Could this nineteen and a half million dollars that you have in the bond, is it possible that some of these issues that you're looking for in the new bond, nineteen and a half million, is it possible that some of those funds could be used for that? In essence, what I'm looking for is is there a possibility for our taxpayers to get a little savings here uh, instead of having to, I mean, debt is debt. Correct. Is it possible that this money could be used to fulfill some of those obligations that you have at the bond door? Now, I say the bond door, that's what you're looking, you're looking at. Is it possible? I don't know if there's a right or wrong answer here. I don't know if you can give it to me now, but I just want you to think about it. Is it possible? So the, the $19.5 million is a uh, uh, premium that we received on the first issuance. So it's, a, it's debt that's available to the commissioners to issue if you choose to, but you don't have to, because the system got their $150 million project cash 
with the first issuance. We used a little bit of premium uh, rather than issue all the bond par that we could have issued. That, that $19.5 million is extra additional debt that you could take on. The, the debt service payment that would be needed to, to pay for that $19.5 million is in the plan currently. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you wanted to use some portion of bond premium to pay for any of the school system's top 10 list or any other projects. You could do that as long as they met the requirements as defined in the bond orders uh, and the authorizing legislation to, to do that kind of capital work and the debt service to make the payments are in the plan. So um, I think what uh, the school system has realized this uh, large amount of capital reserve for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, I think uh, we had project timelines changed from early on from our original projections that put a little bit more money into their capital reserve. The fact that we got a better interest rate, if you recall, in the first uh, bond issuance, I think we had assumed 4.5%. I believe it came in around 1.4 maybe total. 1.43. 1. That's right. So that helps build this. And then sales tax is, is one of the big reasons. Mm -hmm. The sales tax numbers have been huge. So <coughs> if the commissioners want to fund any school system capital needs beyond the, the education bond projects that they're already doing, the $3.3 million in PAYGO that they receive every year. Uh, you could use this capital reserve, which we think by the end of this fiscal year could be as high as $15.9 million based on what we think sales tax is going to do for the rest of the fiscal year. Or you could, I hope I'm saying this correctly, and Susan and Andrew, if, you, if I'm not, please step in. You could issue part of the premium that was not issued originally, right? That's the $19.5 million. Funding to pay that debt service is in the plan, and it does not rely on this $15.9 million to make those payments either. It's already in the, the functioning part of the school system's finance plan. So. Is there anything, Susan, Andrea, y'all would uh, add to that to make it any clearer or to help? Well, maybe I should make myself clear because I, I don't think I, I did. Um, I was looking just the opposite. I was looking, instead of having to issue the $19.5 million in debt, that has to be paid back. I was looking, is there some things that on these projects that the bond project, the, the, those, that particular money for that bond could be used. So therefore saving the taxpayers some debt in the back end. That's the only thing I was looking at. I don't know if it's possible, but I thought I'd ask. So I think, it, or Mr. Lash, are you talking about any savings they've seen perhaps on <laughs> other projects? No, 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 no. I'm just talking, okay, you're looking at the bond door mm -hmm. and you have $19.5 million that you're gonna walk in with. To issuance. Yes. What I was looking at is some of his projects. Is there any projects that have to do with the bond that could be used with this money, therefore saving the taxpayers some money in the back end of the bond? I hear saving what you're money saying. Saving money on the payments, I think, is what you're saying. Right? Well, actually, not even. Uh, actually, not, if I have it, uh, can I can issue nineteen million dollars. What if I could issue um, sixteen million? So right. therefore, my debt, debt service. I'm just reducing my debt, and therefore helping the taxpayer on the back end. Just a question, uh, you know, because there's a lot of money out there. And I did some figures this, this weekend with my spreadsheet, and uh, there's a lot of savings out there. Uh, I know outside of the inflation stuff, but <laughs> you see what I'm saying? There's some things that the things we could do right now that could save us some money two or three years from now. That's my only point. And I got one last question, Dr. Okay. Trump, and I'll shut up. Uh, it, it's, just a, it's just a question that I have. What would be the proper balance in that fund, that capital reserve fund that we have 15.9? What would be a proper number that you would feel comfortable having in that, in that fund? The reason I ask that question is, if we have a lot of money in our, quote, savings account, well, let's use it. If it's proper, if you, you know, you don't want to get your balance down too low, you know. I understand Jeremy probably doesn't like from, that. I know, but from my opinion, yes, sir. Uh, from what I've seen when we've had to do some emergency repairs, you know, that account needs to be between 5 and $6 million because sure. just knowing what roofs cost, what emergency repairs would cost in your HVAC system, but I would feel very comfortable okay. somewhere in those numbers. So in essence, you would probably, you would like, it could be used as a, uh, an emergency capital needs. If you had any emergency Correct. capital needs, something like a storm happens. Storm comes through, takes a roof off. We got to wait on insurance to pay for it, but I need to give a roof on it. Excellent. It would be funding that I would have available that I could come to you and say, "Here it is." But like I said, knowing the cost and kind of what could happen, mm -hmm. that's where I stand. Well, I do appreciate it. Thank one, you so much. That's a good question, Mr. Lash. One thing I would add to Todd's answer is this would also be where we would look 
to this fund first in the event we do start to see any economic downturn. Uh, the, the current plan calls for $6.7 million a year in sales tax revenue to go into their portion of the plan, which has been booming mm -hmm. of late. Uh, we're looking at projecting maybe $10 million uh, this fiscal year, right, which is great news. If the if the economy did take a downturn and we started seeing decreased amount of sales tax revenues come in, I would suggest the commissioners could look to these funds also to supplement the plan because that's helping to pay debt service too. Right, sure. So it's, it's a good idea to leave some in the in the pot for the school system in the event they do have an emergency. It's also good for us if we start seeing sales tax revenues tail off. As long as they stay above $6.7 million annually, the plan will function from the sales tax perspective. It's just if we start getting into anything that's worse than that, uh, you'd want to look at this fund. To, to, can you get through a year or two of a downturn? Mm -hmm. And you said the number was 6.7 annually? But there is a, a yeah. Yeah, very I, accurate figure, but 6.7 is, is a rough round. Yeah, that's what I've been using mm -hmm. as well. Yes, sir. And um, Okay, thank you. Uh, Dr. Thorpe, thank you so much for your yes, time. Sir. I appreciate your help. Mr. Turner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Dr. Thorpe. I have a couple of series of questions. One's related to the projects themselves and one to the funding source. Sure. The source says potentially for those. Um, first of all, I appreciate you bringing it. I think it's good to bring this request. I mean, the, um, I appreciate you putting together the top ten list, which was an effort to, for ABSS to prioritize capital needs so that I think the commissioners could find a way to fund those and to get those things moving and that we start uh, over time to yes, take care of some of these capital needs. And as I understand it, the, the request here is for seven of the top ten projects that have been identified? Yes, sir. I think that makes sense. I mean, Hall River is your, your top Yes, sir. With the masonry and the roof of the top is the top priority. I think it makes sense to fund that. I mean, it makes sense also. I think for um, for Graham High and Southern High. I mean, those are bond projects where there are, is construction going on. Correct. At both of those locations, it makes sense that we that, that we um, have a project that we can work at the same time. Construction's already going on. I mean, it doesn't make sense to finish bond construction and then later come back and do roofs. So I think make another mess. That's what. Yeah. We're yeah, I think that makes sense. The um, the uh, traffic improvements, AO, AW, and EM Holt, um, are those, is it your understanding that those traffic improvements would be DOT refundable? Yes, sir. As long as funding, what we have been told, as long as funding is available when we submit, they are refundable projects. So I, th I think that's another reason um, why it makes sense to do these particular projects. Um, you get those things in the hopper, you ask for reimbursement from DOT while DOT has money. Yes, sir. Uh, and while DOT is funding, <laughs> yes, uh, so that we get reimbursements uh, as quickly as possible and then can reuse that money yes, again. So these are requests that are outside the budget cycle, but they're in cycle in terms of, of the school system. I mean, if we do these now, hopefully we can do some of these improvements over the summer when kids aren't there, less disruptive. And so if we're thinking in terms of when the school is in a session, I think it makes sense to get these things uh, moving now for, for those reasons as well. And especially your road improvements, uh, although they're on campus, uh, they are in Colorado line, so they have to be really, we have to be strategic when we do those, because uh, we are going to mess the Colorado lines up, and right now, those three have the worst, uh, you know, we're backing up 119.54, we're backing cars down 87 past the bridge. EM Holt, we got cars coming from all different directions. So, yes, it does make sense to, like you said, to get them in the hopper and get them done as quickly as possible. And I think you've said before that those traffic uh, improvements are really safety safety issues. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Uh, we've had law enforcement involved. We've had DOT involved. We've had studies done, and they all show uh, significant improvements need to be made. Okay. And the last thing is that, I mean, these have to be made. These are high priority um, items. And the longer we wait, as we've already seen based on your May 21 budget and your budget now, the costs go up. Yes, sir. So the money's there. Let's take care of these high priority things and then, then let's supplement the top 10 list so that that, that list is always like a, an active yes, sir. live list. Yes, sir. Um, now on the funding side, uh, there are many ways to fund this. Um, the, the first question I have is is cash that we have on hand, which, which would be savings, and Mr. Elastie was alluding to this before, savings on bond projects. Um, a question for the county attorney. I know there's some there's some talk that that savings on bond projects can only be used on bond schools. Is that an accurate uh, statement or to your knowledge? So, well, I think probably, I hope this answers your question. I went back and uh, researched and so when you look at the actual language that was on the bond referendum, 
that's what counts, right? That's what controls everything because that's what the voters read on their ballot and either voted for or against, although in this case it, it passed. And so that language, and now, now I'm speaking to the referendum on a, uh, April 16th of 2018 for the $150 million, says, for the purpose of providing funds with any other available funds for erecting additional school buildings and other school plant facilities, enlarging, reconstructing, renovating, and replacing existing school buildings and other school plant facilities, and acquiring any necessary land, furnishings, equipment, and appurtenant facilities, therefore. That is, and that is what we see traditionally, broad language to allow all of you within the school system and you as commissioners the discretion to be able to do what you need to do to improve the facilities for the children here. Okay. So, Dr. Thorpe, I know that some of these bond projects are, are under budget currently. Are, are there any bond savings that you could identify at this point that you could say that we could use? Uh, or what, what's your thoughts on that? I would love to, uh, but where we stand right now with escalating cost in some areas, uh, we're securing stuff as quickly as we can to keep prices in what we consider reasonable range. Uh, I would definitely be available to engage in those conversations after the summer after we do the major owning repairs and removal because there's the unknowns that lie under that ground uh, cabling um, intercoms the whole fire alarm everything is either on top or underground okay. uh, but yes it'd be the summer or towards the end of the summer before I really feel comfortable at that point of giving you some some numbers okay that, that's fair, and, and of course there are other there are other needs that are going to are going to come about. So that may be a future discussion yes, about sir. what to do with yes. those funds. The other thing, uh, ESSER funds that the school system has is what is it your understanding that that the restrictions around the school system's ESSER funds allow spending on these particular projects, or is it just the, it the does air not. quality? It has to on? directly reflect air quality. Okay. Um, question, maybe uh, for the county manager the. Uh, are there excess lottery funds that we could also pull forward for some of these requests? So you do have an item on your agenda today, commissioners, uh, where Susan will be presenting a request to revert some lottery funds, almost half a million dollars. Uh, Susan and Dr. Thorpe have been through those projects, identified ones that have been completed. If there were balances left to put back into the lotteries, uh, holding tank for the school system for lack of a better word one thing i would say about the lottery funds is we do budget lottery every year for the school systems uh, capital plan to the tune of one million four hundred fifty nine thousand and some odd dollars so we're we're always hoping that there's going to be 1.459 annually in the school systems lottery balance at the state the, the the board of education originally agreed did a joint agreement with this with the commissioners to use one million four hundred fifty nine thousand and some odd dollars to make debt service payments so while that four hundred ninety five thousand will be going back to the school systems holding tank uh, I would I would say it'd be wise to watch and make sure that we're gonna have another million dollars added to it for next fiscal year before you commit those funds uh, just to make sure we can use it to pay the debt service so it, it we will reach a point where there will be additional lottery funds I believe but I think we're from staff's perspective, we want to make sure that uh, the funding is there at Raleigh to make these payments. Anything you want to add, Susan? Um, I was just going to say that with our current balance of 989000 once this money is returned, which we'll vote on later, we would have a balance of $1.4 million. Okay. Uh, we have received our first quarter payment this year, which was 491000 and in fiscal year 21, we received $2.1 we have already pulled down that 1.4 for the debt service this year, but as um, County Manager Haygood said, it is good to keep a watch on those to ensure that we do have that 1.4 for the next year's debt service payment. And those, those funds are the school systems to control, so we, we report to them regularly how much is in there, so I would imagine there'll be a point when staff and the school system staff feel comfortable bringing requests to the commissioners to spend the lottery funds that are uh, in the lottery savings account above the 1459 uh, at some point I'm sure you'll see Dr. Thorpe asking for whatever is in there the excess to be used and do those <laughs> funds have to be used for capital yes yes the school they capital yes, school, for school capital yes. All right. and, and you mentioned something you just said something on a 2.1 million and 19 or is that 20 that's what we received in fiscal year 21 so these payments do change they do change they're not yes. 
Static. Static. Okay. Thank you. Two more funding sources. Um, DOT reimbursement from prior uh, capital improvements that we've made. Is there any update on when we might get that reimbursement? The new high school, they're pulling those numbers together for us as we speak. Uh, so hopefully by the end of the month, I will have something to present the DOT. The, um, uh, excuse me, whoa, Southern. Uh, they're doing that this summer. Okay. And we've asked them to keep those numbers and pull them together as quick as they can once that summer project's done so we can submit those to you. So a lot of potential funding sources that we that we can aggregate to to use as, as essentially cash pay go before we, we have to think about that from my perspective. Yes, sir. Um, and as we I think it's important to keep having conversations as these monies come in as we know what those are and as there are other um, potential funding opportunities for, for capital, let's 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 have an I'd say I agree. an ongoing conversation about keeping that. I agree. I agree. And, and then finally, we've got capital reserves, and as I understand it, those capital reserves are ABSS capital reserves. The money can only be used for ABSS capital. Is that right? And we're two point seven million dollars over what the plan calls for for debt service. I think uh, our projection for this fiscal year is uh, the last time I saw the projections was roughly ten million dollars, which we need six point seven uh, for this fiscal year. So is that correct? I believe it's three point two million dollars. We're projecting. We won't know that. For sure until the end of this fiscal year but that's the that's where we're trending right now so. okay so there's there's money there to even if we can't use these other funding sources there's money there in the capital reserves to cover this request to get this started. i think that makes sense to do i have one other one other sure. brief which is going to help you <laughs> <laughs> um as i understand it in the in the next and i just want to have a conversation about this i don't think we're going to take action on this but the, the um at this meeting the uh Next school year's budget calls for, I think it's about $500,000 for, for security improvements in the middle schools. Is that right? It's uh, for cameras and additional additional cameras and security in those schools. How long does it take once you have the money to install cameras? And does it take longer if kids are in schools? It takes longer if kids are in schools. Uh, typically, our design team can get it designed within six to eight weeks. Uh, right now, we're seeing a delay in equipment. But if we can get, the, I see a tech guy there saying yes, sir. Uh, but if we can see um, a design, we can pull the cables. That's what the holdup is: is getting the cables and to where they need to be. But we can get the cables, roll them up, put them above ceiling. Then when the equipment come in, pop it in. So again, we're we're used to thinking in terms of budget cycles, but we're talking about schools and safety in schools, I think we should be thinking about school uh, school cycles. And if, we're, if we wait to a budget cycle to, to do what we're likely to do for school security anyway, it seems we're going to wait until the next school year. Correct. Why don't we think about it now? Why don't we think about pulling that forward so we can have these new security systems in place for the, for the next school year, which will be 22-23? I agree. Uh, and that's, that's something you. we could, as we're talking no, about capital improvements. Yeah, it is. Excellent idea. So let's, let's think about that, for I think, for the next meeting as part of this request. I will, I will bring it in a little more formal than just half million dollars. Commissioner, I think you're uh, I think you're onto something because with uh, a account with 15 yeah. point nine in it, if we take seven out or eight to do this, I'm more than willing to get, let him take a half a million bucks and take care of the safety because I firmly believe that safety and security is yeah. one of my main goals yes, as a government. That's person. why I've got 22 uh, projects going on right now that deal with safety. That's really good to hear, and I know the, the parents. Don't happen at a convenient time of cameras being placed. Yeah. Uh, that's true. But yeah, we, we got about 22 different projects going on Excellent. that relate to safety. I know the community would definitely like to hear that. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. On the traffic reimbursement from DOT, uh, you said if available. Define if available. <laughs> they use the word if as it's just a common language with folks. Mm -hmm. um, every time you ask, you hear the words if available. I'm shooting for wins available. If I have to hold a request to another budget cycle to make sure funds are available, I'm willing to do that. So I don't like the word if. So when I go to meet with DOT, my question is going to be, do you have $1.7 million or whatever that number may be? If they say no, I, say, I will see you <laughs> in July. <laughs> so yes, because they keep saying if, but if, 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 if's the word, we'll wait till they can say yes. Because there's no time frame that we've been given. So there's no guarantee on reimbursement. No, there's no guarantee, but I feel I feel good 
Uh, we've had enough conversations with the folks at DOT. I feel good they'll hold us in a high priority and get us reimbursed because they want to get these projects done as well. We'd like to point out, if reimbursed, then it goes back in that same school bucket or pool or yes, whatever. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. We'll, we'll give it back. We're not going to keep it. We'll give it back. <laughs> we'll, we'll share the wealth. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Wait, Thank you, Dr. Well, hold it. Okay. <laughs> um, I just want to remind my fellow commissioners that in 2020, when we were all running for election, some of us, and we were putting out our road signs, the grass on the side of the road was probably a good two and a half foot because there was a $750 million, I don't know where it went, issue with the DOT. I don't, I wish I had that kind of money where I could just lose $750 million in Me and whatever. <laughs> And I just am curious, with all this traffic, I know Patsy Simpson and I used to ask this all the time, is anybody riding the buses? Because when I go to Smith, Lord have mercy, they're out on Mabin, and mm -hmm. I mean, and hey, well, I'm all for how you want to get your youngest to school, but they're at, what's the deal? Okay, and see, that's part of the issue, too. Our schools, majority of our schools were designed during the time that the majority of parents mm -hmm. put kids on buses. Right. So we didn't put in these long queuing areas that we're having to go back and do now to get people off the state roads. Right. Uh, in Alamance County, we transport between nine and 10,000 students a day. So that means you got anywhere between 10 and 12,000 students, 13,000 students in cars every day. Uh, so it's definitely a parent choice. We can't mandate oh, I uh, to. you ride the bus, but, and, and that number is pretty static. That's where we've stayed at for years. Uh, I think a lot of it now is you do have a lot of folks working from home. You do have a lot of availability for people to drive, so they're choosing to drop the kids off at school. Well, that's a comfort, and I, I, I took mine, and so I'm, I'm just curious because it's just a lot of traffic, and, and I would like to personally thank the federal government to giving all the money to schools because all of a sudden the air quality matters thanks to COVID, and there's always been in old buildings, <coughs> old problems, uh, the M-O-L-D word, a four-letter word. So um, it, it amazes me at how all of a sudden something can matter now where it didn't before when we were begging for boiler, boiler, boiler. That's all I used to hear is boiler and chiller. So um, God bless you with all the HVAC. I know you dream about it. It's fun. It's all fun. <laughs> where are we as far as uh, availability of our bus drivers? I know we were going through a serious period where we were having a difficult time having enough bus drivers. We still run between 30 and 40 bus drivers short at any given run. Uh, so, we, so we double up routes. We um, combine routes uh, where, you know, typically you can, you may have to back a route up 15 minutes and start a little earlier, let parents know. But it's just one of those times that uh, folks don't want to drive buses. And as the requirements for CDLs continue to get harder and harder, it's going to be more difficult to find folks to drive buses. And with the GPS on the buses, we know they go. So oh. don't be saying they were late because Todd can pull up and go, uh-uh, they just left like 2.6 seconds ago. I can, so, I can, I'm telling I can, you, it's like I can tell you what time they stop. Episode. Yeah. We thank you. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Don't you get it with Good morning again, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, and thank you for allowing us to uh, present you with an update of where we are with our bond projects. Thank you very much. Uh, with me today we have the Mayor of Green Level, Mayor Sandra McCollum, Mayor McCollum, and we have the Town Manager of Green Level, Barrett Brown. Barrett. I also have members of my staff this morning, uh, Tom Hartman, who is our Associate Vice President for Administrative Services, who is really over all of our bond projects and capital projects in the college. We have uh, Mr. C.D. Kreps, financial, uh, Chief Financial Officer, whom I will introduce a little more in a few minutes. And we also have this morning, as you've already heard uh, the executive vice president of the college, and that's Dr. Connie Wolf. Sheriff Johnson is also in the room, 
And Sheriff Johnson doesn't work for Alamance Community College. He works for all of us, you in particular, and he has a, a, a unique interest in some of what we'll be talking about today. I want to go back to Green Level just for a moment. As a reminder, in Green Level, we're constructing the Public Safety Training Center, and that project is well in the design phase right now, and we should uh, begin construction before too long. It's located on the corner or the intersection of Highway 49 and Santa Cross Road. And that is going to make a world of difference to not only to our students and the uh, basic law enforcement training program, the fire protection program, and the emergency medical services program, but to the community of Green Level. It will provide an economic boost that they certainly need, which is good for every one of us. I'm going to go back to Mr. Kreps now. Uh, C.D. Kreps, Chris Kreps, will be presenting much of what we have to share with you today because it has to do with finances. You don't know him, but C.D. has been in the finance business for a long time. He spent more than 20 years as a county finance director the equivalent to Andrea and Susan. And so he knows a lot about how to make things work when it comes to dollars and cents and how counties and schools can work together and so on. The rest of this presentation will share with you three scenarios. These scenarios take into consideration where we are right now with our bond projects and where we go from here. And CD, when you make this presentation, please be very clear about this is scenario one, scenario two, and scenario three, because they're very different and the outcome of each scenario is very different. So at this time, I'd like for you to come forward, uh, C.D., and while he's making his way here, I've often wondered if we had the right projects on the book for Alamance Community College, and I know more today than that we do. We certainly do. We have the Public Safety Training Center. You've seen what law enforcement can do, and I would venture to say that most, if not all, of those individuals that you saw this morning got their training through Alamance Community College. I know that with our EMT program, we have 100% placement rate. Not 99, but 100%. And then, of course, our fire protection program, I, I don't really need to explain that to you. We can all go to sleep at night because we know that we have firemen who have been well trained and in many cases by Alamance Community College. We have another, a couple other major projects that we plan to do after we finish up the, the uh, public safety training facility. And of course, CD will share with you where we are with the Biotechnology Center of Excellence and where we are with our new student services um, facility. But we've always referenced part of the on-campus projects as the Powell Building and Main Building. We'll talk a little bit more today about what that really means. The Powell Building, we have one thing we're going to do in the Powell Building, and that is change that facility, expand the, first, the third floor when biotechnology moves out into its new digs so that we can expand nursing. Nursing has a critical, it had a shortage when we started this work. That shortage has grown. You read the newspaper every day and nurses are walking away in groves. It's down to a point now where hospitals are actually considering, and in some cases they are, recruiting nurses from overseas. I don't want to be in the hospital, but if I had to be in the hospital, I'd much rather be cared for by someone who had a better understanding, not just of my illness, but my culture and, and, and the people here as well as myself. I could talk all day. Dr. Wolf has already cautioned me to be brief, so I'm going to close right here. 
and um, allow C.D. Krepp, where did he go? He's waiting on me <laughs> to come and make some comments and share some <coughs> slides with you. After which, uh, Mrs. McCollum or Mayor McCollum may, may wish to say something, and the sheriff may wish to say something, and we'd be happy to have comments from, from each of them. So, uh, C.D., you want to come forward? Dr. Gary, good, good morning. Chair and the rest of the commissioners, how are you this morning? Good morning. Uh, thank you for your time today. I'll try to be brief as well, even though I didn't get those instructions directly from Dr. Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she would say the same. Um, so, uh, uh, I just first want to set uh, where we are today. Um, Five and a half million dollars short. Uh, shortfall, five and a half million dollar shortfall on our Thank bond you. projects. I hear that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yep. Uh, as you know, uh, several months back, I think we came to you and, and shared that we were two point four million dollars short on our first two projects: the Biotech uh, Center of Excellence as well as the Student Services Center. And now we're looks like two and a half million dollars short on our Public Safety Training Center, and another almost six hundred thousand dollars for equipment short on our next project, which is the nursing expansion as well as the main campus update. And explain why there's a shortage, because we have a lot of people listening Absolutely. that are not, that will have all the numbers. Absolutely. Uh, of course, the uh, last couple, couple years under the pandemic, been a lot of cost escalations, uh, not just with supply stuff, but just in general, lumber prices have gone up and, and uh, labor prices have just skyrocketed as well. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, next, uh, just briefly go over the, all the uh, four projects individually. This is our biotech center. And we've got some steel going up there. Um, it's our first project financed with the county uh, bonds that began uh, summer of last year and is scheduled to complete uh, this coming winter. Uh, there's the initial numbers and the new numbers on our budget. That shows the $1.9 million increase. Um, next is our Student Services Center. Uh, we have a uh, retaining wall a couple weeks back was 90% poured. It also began a few months ago and it is also scheduled to complete uh, next winter. And there's the initial budget and the new budget on those figures, uh, roughly $500,000 increase. Um, unforeseen cost escalations again due to COVID-19 and the pandemic. And the Public Safety Training Center is our upcoming project um, includes a driving pad as you see there indoor firing range well that's not the driving pad this is a local picture as well as some classroom space and the fire fire burning or fire training center that can also be used um, by the uh, law enforcement as well uh, scheduled to begin later this year and again we are facing tremendous cost escalations you can see the initial budget and the new budget here as well Another looming project is the nursing expansion and main campus update, which in, we've also called that the long title of Maine, Powell and G buildings, uh, classrooms, offices, library renovation, and childcare updates. Um, it also includes a tutoring center uh, upgrade as well. And uh, here we're showing the initial budget that was included in the bonds from a couple years back at four, or initial bonds, I guess we're back at 18. Uh, just over 4.4 million and now we're looking at uh, just over five million dollars for that project uh, also scheduled to begin uh, this coming winter uh, now to go over some scenarios um, to overcome uh, these cost unforeseen cost escalations we've got some scenarios that dr. Gatewood uh, mentioned we've got three possible scenarios for consideration and just bear with me as we go through the numbers it can be tedious and boring to look at numbers all day if you're not used to it. So anyway, um, again, we've got the Biotech Center Student Services Center projects there, total of 21, 26 million. And then it shows the funding there from the loan proceeds as well as the premium uh, from April of 21. And then we have the uh, $2.4 million gap, basically. Um, uh, not yet specified. So. To get to a 26 million so uh, that 2.4 million possibly could be funded from our capital reserves uh, that the county has on behalf of acc um, 
or, or perhaps <coughs> county art funds. Um, I think uh, we have roughly 4.6 uh, in the county reserve funds is forecasted for our year end. So 2.4 would be a good part of that. Um, I think uh, the plan includes a <coughs> minimum balance of 3.2 in the coming years. Uh, so we don't want to draw too much from that. Again, we also want to leave some for emergencies, just like Dr. Thorpe was talking about. Um, and to continue, uh, this is a two-pager. Um, the current, currently available for our final projects. Um, well, I'm sorry, here we have the Public Safety Training Center, the Nursing Expansion, and the Salat campuses all listed there, a total of 18.9 million. And if we were to issue the remaining 18.9 million of available uh, bonds for the for these projects, you could consider them uh, completely funded. And so that's one scenario. Scenario two um, is uh, um, I'll get to the 536 in just a second. I'll show you that calculation. But what we currently have available for our projects is just over $500,000. After the first three projects are fully funded. Uh, with bond money, and so if we were to add 2.5 million uh, from capital reserves, that would get us to just over three million dollars for our nursing uh, expansion and main campus update, plus the two satellite campuses that were also included in the, in the bond uh, project list. Um, and then the current situation: this is where I show the $500,000 calculation. We started with the 39.6 uh, bonds. We've issued or we, we took away uh, for the first two projects that were 26 million to get to 13 million dollars left of the available 39.6 and then if we subtract 12.9 for the public safety training center we only have five hundred thousand dollars left for our remaining projects um, turn it over for questions or, or comments if anyone has comments uh, from the uh, Room first before we get any questions. However, the board wants to proceed. Um, there was a comment. I'm sorry. There was a comment where you said how this is going to really change things for Green Level. It was going to really boost everything. Can you tell me how that's going to happen? What does oh, that we can mean? have the mayor come okay. forward as well. Anybody? I'm just curious. I'm ready. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, as he said, I am newly elected mayor for Green Level. Congratulations. Thank you. I worked for Green Level for 30 years, town clerk. So many years ago, I was at work at the Green Level Town Hall when this man came in and introduced himself as Terry Johnson, and he would be a candidate for the sheriff's office for Alamance County. We talked about the concerns of the town, and he listened to what I had to say. Then he said, what would you like to see for Green Level? I stated that we need law enforcement because the open drug dealing that we have in the streets that keep the residents in fear. Then he said, Mrs. McCollum, if I become sheriff of Alamance County, I promise you this drug problem will be dealt with. When Mr. Terry Johnson became Sheriff Terry Johnson, a substation was placed in the town hall and green level crime rate is now next to none because Terry, Sheriff Terry Johnson did what he promised me for green level. So I'm believing the vision for the sheriff, Dr. Gatewood, and you commissioners for this training center. And when I spoke to this board before, we talked about the lease agreement for the center. And I was thinking when we meet again, we will be at the ribbon cutter for the center. Right. But as I look at one of the Alamance County Welcome website, it states the towns and villages of Alamance County. Burlington, Melbourne, Elon, Graham, 
and sat for home. And then the logo says, small surprises awaits in Alamance County. There is no green level under this welcome logo. Under the welcome logo, we want to be known that in green level, there awaits a small surprise, a place of purpose. Because we have Alamance Community College in our town so that we will be able to unify with other towns in Alamance County. The training center will be inspiring because it will create energy, increasing commitment for change, and without commitment, change is never started. The training center will provide a focus point this will draw the eyes of viewers that may be interested in Green Level, and this will set goals and planning for businesses for Green Level. Alamance Community College will be a great surprise. A meal served on a plate, a spoonful of recognition for us, and the town of Green Level is waiting. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want your county manager to add anything? Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. I, I just, I didn't get my answer. And I mean, bless your heart. You're amazing. I'm just curious, is all the folks that are part of this program that's going to be housed in this building, if it's built in Green Level, or when it's built, I should say, not if, when, um, are all of those folks that are at the community college going to all go and be under the same roof so you'll have open spaces at the community college as far as office buildings rooms classrooms thank you i'm just not Good getting question. it please help me just help I, me. I will help you so gary saunders is the vice president thank you ma'am for thank you. continuing education and basic law enforcement training fire ems all comes under gary as it stands, we average about 6,421 students per year in basic law enforcement training. Now, that is a duplicated headcount, but it doesn't matter because each time I come to your class space, be it in green level, wherever it is, I'm coming and I come with my wallet and I invest <laughs> my time for class, but I'll get, maybe I'll buy gas, maybe I'll buy some groceries, maybe I will buy food and these are the kind of things that we don't really calculate very well and it's hard to do but we know those things take place fire protection we average right now 923 students according to Gary's projection we'll be able to enroll 1246 EMS will it in make space available on our campus. In the case of EMS, we just provided some upgraded and expanded space for them on the campus and they will continue to come to the campus. But at the very same time, there are parts of the training that we can't do on the campus. The maneuvers on the driving pad and certain other types of training. That is true for EMS, that is true for fire, and of course almost everything will be on at the training center, if not everything, for the basic law enforcement training. BLET is not going to free up much on our campus. We have a classroom or two that we use, um, but we can certainly backfill that with other uh, programs and, uh, and classes. Fire protection is all over the place, and it will still be offered across the county at various fire stations and so forth. But we'll have this facility to provide that unique training that we can't do in those places. Uh, I just explained EMS. I'm going to go back to basic law enforcement training again. We're all over the place there. We don't really have a place we call home except a couple of classrooms. We cannot do firing range <coughs> uh, practice in those classrooms. We cannot do a lot of different things in those classrooms that we will be able to do at this training center. Mr. Lastly, you mentioned that public safety, and I'm going to paraphrase, is something dear to your heart. 
And this is what all of this is about, public safety. Each of the programs that will be located at the uh, training center. Just curious, where are you practicing driving with the MS and where are you practicing shooting right now if you don't have a place at ACC? Sheriff, you, you want to come up and assist me with the answers to that, <clears throat> please? We have to send our people to, I think it's Sanford, has a driving track. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> it would be good to be able to have our driving track to not only train our deputies, because I'm telling you right now, uh, we've had numerous uh, wrecks uh, in uh, law enforcement here that is costing us. <clears throat> we need this training center. Not only is it going to affect all the emergency service people here in the county, but you're going to have people coming from the surrounding counties here, which is going to make a big economic, I think, impact on the town of Green Level as well as Alamance County. Also, these officers that come here from out of the area is going to need a place to stay. So I feel like there'll be a hotel popping up somewhere in Green Level and there'll be a McDonald's, a Hardee's, and places to eat. Mm -hmm. uh, but above <coughs> all that, we are under the microscope in law enforcement today by every individual in this nation. And the training that is needed right now, we're, we're not able to put all of it on the, the, the college because they don't have the room. For instance, we got a cartel school that's going to be coming in here that's going to probably bring 50, 60, 70, 80 officers from all over the, the county, not counting what will come out. We need this training center, folks. How far is this training center from the campus? I believe it's about three miles. Tom, would you agree with that? It's about three miles from the main campus. Are there any questions? Sure, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. I have one single question to Mr. Hagerhead. Um, <coughs> this welcome I'm not sh quite sure what the mayor's talking about. What help me understand? It's, it's on the Chamber of Commerce website. It's a welcome to Alabama County. And on the logo, like I stated, there are the different towns and villages under this logo. So what I was saying, Green Level is not under this logo. We want to be part of that too. Sure. We and we we want to be recognize and uh, we want to be proud and we want to have um, people saying well you know in that small town this this is such a wonderful training center from community college and uh, we want to thank Alamance County for providing this privilege for us because we've only been incorporated as you all know since 1990. So, as a town, so this is a big thing for Green Level. So, collectively, you you guys and gals in Green Level, and we as commissioners and we as a county, need to contact the chamber and request that change. Sure. Are there other municipalities that are excluded? I think, actually, we have uh, Brian Baker from our Parks Department here. Brian works with the Convention and, uh, and Visitors Bureau who manage that piece of the site, so I think he might be able to speak to uh, how the CVB is marketing our municipal partners. So. Yeah, uh, so all the communities are included in that uh, small surprises branding, and, and they're all represented on the website. I think I did just look up the page you're looking at, which was kind of featuring several small communities. The Green Level was not one of those communities, but I've already, right. I've already sent a text. So. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Brian. Nice work. Ma'am, you're elected just like we are. You are a mayor. That's mm -hmm. a big thing, so you need to be up in lights. Oh, so thank you for standing up for yourself and your community. Thank you. And it looks like you just made a change. Okay. <laughs> So just, just to recap, we have three scenarios. In scenario one, CD. And yeah, scenario one, uh, we are fully funding all of our projects. Um, uh, with 2.4 million, perhaps from capital reserves or our funds, and then uh, 
between uh, the remaining uh, bonds of 18.9 million. And scenario two? Scenario two uh, would be a $2.5 million draw on our capital reserves held by the county. Um, that would leave $3 million uh, for our, our remaining projects after the public safety. Which would be an insufficient amount to do all of those projects. And so we would have to make the decision, what do we not do? In scenario one, we also get the opportunity to finish out that third floor. That is correct. So nursing, scenario one, we get to do nursing. To EMS to yes, nursing. sir. Quick question. I know we got a letter about all the awesome amount of monies that we got concerning um, Senator Gailey, Representative Rydell, and Hurtado. It was like over $3 million for you guys. What specifically is that going toward? That is $3.6 million that will go toward the purchase of equipment for the Biotechnology Center of Excellence building. And since I'm here and since you brought that up, I, I am so, so, and we are so, so happy and pleased with the great work that Senator Gailey has done to, to accomplish that for, not just for Alamance County, but for, for Alamance Community College. It is going to make a world of a difference, and this is the first time in our history that we've gotten a special appropriation, to my knowledge, to support Alamance Community College. So we are we just in awe about Senator Gailey. She's representing this county incredibly well. Uh, Ms. Bechtel? Yes. Do we have the same language in the bond for the uh, community college that we did in the bond for the schools that uh, allows some flexibility in the way these funds are drawn? It's and very used? similar but slightly different, so for the record, I'm just going to read that to you. And this, again, is from the referendum from April 16th of 2018. In the case of the community colleges, the amount is $39,600,000. And what it includes is the construction of additional buildings and other facilities, the enlargement, reconstruction, renovation, and repair of existing buildings and other facilities, and the acquisition of any necessary excuse me, any necessarily, any necessary land, furnishings, equipment, and appurtenant facilities, therefore. Now, at the time these, this, these bonds were presented, there were, there were several projects, and the two of the projects we're talking about, the possibility of having to leave off the day, are the east and west um. Um, satellite centers. One of the scenarios I think has to leave those off, am I correct? Commissioner Carter, if we go to scenario three, we will leave off nursing, we will leave off the upgrade to main building, we will leave off the library, we will leave off the satellite centers east and west, <sighs> and we'll leave off the tutoring center, which is embedded into the main building project. Scenario one uses premium funds to. That's correct. Premium. All this straight in my head. Um, premium funds and two point four or two point five million dollars from four. the two point four million dollars from the reserve account. Is the premium funds what we've talked about before? How the county voted on a certain amount of a bond, and these premium funds are additional money. They may be at a better interest rate, but it is still debt that we'll have to pay back. Bill Lashley. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, uh, just to clarify, the $3 million is, is premium above the bonds. It's, it's not repaid back. You just pay back the principal, and the principal, I think, was 20.6. On the initial issue, that's why you have 18.9 left to issue. Or you can't, available left to issue. You don't have to issue that, of course. So it's free? No. No. <laughs> no. Not necessarily okay. free. Okay. Kind of like COVID money. Well, the interest it's rates, free. the interest rates, the, do you know the difference between do you know what a bond is? Yes, okay, do you know the difference between when they initiate and, and they bring it to the bond market, the bond market gives them a, a interest rate, okay? Well, you're a good customer. Right, pay premium for and my, my JP Morgan guys want to make sure you're happy. So we give you, you say you want $5 million in debt. We give you $5 million in debt. And then we like you as a customer so much, we're going to give you another million dollars, but we're going to give you a better interest rate on that second million. That's the premium. That's where premium comes from. That's how it's that's how it's charged to you. 
But when you come to the guy, he doesn't say, hey, you only have to pay me back three million, although I gave you back, I gave you four. It doesn't work that way. It's just the percentages come in at a different level. That's all it is. They just come in at a different level. Uh, and I agree with you basically what you what you said. The only thing I <clears throat> somewhat disappointed in is you know, I'm in financial markets a lot. COVID didn't start. COVID didn't cause inflation. We did. COVID was just a pain in the butt to cause some things. But inflation was not, uh, I don't think your issues that you have with the school is caused by COVID. I think it's caused strictly by inflation. That's my personal opinion. I'm sure there's someone in here who disagrees, and, and you may as well. But uh, that's my personal opinion. I, and I just think you got caught between a rock and a hard spot. Yeah. And, f and when you're building stuff, inflation's got you over the barrel. Mm -hmm. I mean, because right now, the PCI is running 6.8%. 6, 6 PCEs, which is producers' consumer expenditures. A lot of folks don't look at that number, but they really should. 6.1. So that's your real inflation rate, 6.1. I know ABS has had 2.5 additional cost in just steel. And, and so you guys are running 10%. It's, so. it's like There's a lot of steel on what, count, and what the uh, college is doing, too. So. I'd just Absolutely. like to ask your, your finance guy, what scenario, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to give you a layup here, but what scenario would you prefer? Scenario one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and you think you can get all the projects that you have on your list, you can get it done. And you saying you can get it done if you go back to the bond market and get the proceeds that you, that's sitting there waiting for you. Now, let me be very, very clear, Mr. Lashley. I think we can, notwithstanding East and West, we're going to have to have partners. So whatever is remaining there, we, we'll need partners to fill those gaps. So I think we can get everything done on the campus and we'll have some funding that can go toward east and west. And personally, I'm wedded to east and west, so I'm working diligently to get partners to help us to realize that so that we can deliver that to the people of the eastern part of our county. And let's just be clear, to Memon and Burlington. I know you guys were raising money for like, I think your fixtures and all your, what makes your inside of your building really look like it's supposed to. Right. Um, and I know COVID, COVID, the demon of the year, two years. How <laughs> did that amount go? Has that picked back up? Or? Well, here's what we did. We had a fundraising goal of $5 million. Mm -hmm. And the $3.6 million that Senator Gailey leveraged for us also goes toward that $5 million. We actually exceeded the goal. We have, I, I believe it's close to, well, it's around $7 million. Don't hold me to that exact figure. Problem is, that's, that's a good problem. We fundraised for floor one and floor two, and there's a third floor in the Biotechnology Center of Excellence building. Frankly, I think we probably now can furnish, equip all three floors. We may have to go back out to private business and industry and raise a few more dollars, but we're in a really good place with that. And what that has allowed us to do is to invest the entire budget now, it's 19 million uh, into the um, actual facility, the building. Mm -hmm. So that's a burden that we did not place on the people of this county the uh, equipment. Mr. Chairman, I, I do have some questions. I know there's a yes, comment. Sir. Talk about a break. I don't know if you want to take it now. Uh, we've had requests for breaks from at least three of the commissioners. <laughs> <laughs> Connie, uh, Dr. Wolf, I should have listened to you. <laughs> uh, I assume this will come back on our docket as to whether we choose a plan or because it's not on our docket today to take action. That's correct, uh, Commissioners. We thought today would be spent uh, listening to uh, the proposals from ABSS and ACC and then come back on the 21st with some thoughts that the Commissioners might actually take action. But uh, I think, I don't know if Mr. Turner has questions. 
for today's discussion. I, I do, and I can do it now, or we can do it after the break, whatever the chair's preference. I don't, I don't have any problem either. Go. Go ahead. All right. Um, Dr. Gateway, just a, a couple questions about uh, like the project itself and about potential funding, kind of like with the right. school system. Um, 10.4 was in the original budget, 10.4 million and 2.5 million over budget, just if we're just talking about the training center. What do you lose at the training center if you don't get the 2.5 million for that? It's an excellent question. One of the um, tough things that we would lose would be the firing range. And without the firing range, we don't have a training center. Uh, we're not going to be able to draw people from parts of this county to come there. They can't qualify to um, as a law enforcement person with a firearm. We looked at, into the possibility of getting the law changed to where we could use assembly, assimilation instead of the actual uh, weapons for the firing range. And I'm just going to give you a short answer and, out, and I'm going to paraphrase it using my language, dead on arrival. That's not going to happen. And there's accreditation processes that go along with officers being qualified to uh, have a firearm and use it when needed. And so it's an arduous process and we would, I don't think we will ever get there. So that would be the largest thing that we would lose. Now I'm going to invite Tom Hartman to tell me I'm correct. I'll add to it and you can do that today, it's okay. <laughs> Um, has, the, has the college done some value engineering uh, analysis to say, well, you know, maybe we don't need 20 firing lines, maybe what if we had 15, what if we had a smaller driving pad? I mean, have we thought about things to be able to, to, you know, put some sharper pencils on this? Yes, we have, sir. In fact, we were to have two firing ranges. We're down to one. We would have larger classrooms. We would have smaller classrooms. So we've gone in and really gone through a process to discern, you know, what what do we need to have left in order to have a public safety training center? Okay. And we're, that's where we are. This this proposal is is the minimum you need to have an effective. This is bare bones, yes, sir. Um, do you know if if we have a, a center so that other uh, law enforcement office office agencies law enforcement agencies come, can we? Is that a revenue generator? There are some opportunities for generating revenue, yes. Okay. I can't speak in detail about that, uh, but I know that there are opportunities for revenue generating. Um, Sheriff Johnson, can you address that issue? The generation of income. You know, I'm not much of a revenue man, but I will say this, they could put on some schools that possibly they could charge the officers to come. Uh, a little bit like GTCC? Do I now? A little bit like GTCC? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, that only brings back to the... My concern is that the same thing we do when we move with the court building. If we go down too small, are we limiting our ability to grow it and provide the service going yeah. forward? The same level and the same quality. I mean, historically, we've just done this too many times. We've said, you know, let's get the bare bones facility going here, and we didn't spend enough money. And we, as soon as we moved into it, it was not enough. And folks, I just I hate for us to keep. keep. Shortchanging ourselves to the degree that we don't meet the needs of the future residents of Alamance County. I mean, we. I've said this before, we all know this, we all see the numbers. Growth by 2025 with about another 35,000 residents. That's a lot of people. And some of those are going to need training in schools, some of those are going to want training for law enforcement, fire, EMS, um, nursing, other, other programs at ACC. We've got to grow our community, we've got to grow our services to take care of the growth in our of our citizens, the growth in the number of our citizens. And, We've got to be cognizant of that if we keep if we keep trying to ma manage to a bottom line that we're, we're trying to fit to today and neglect the future. 
then we got to come back in the future and look at debt to try and solve that problem going forward. You know, I'd just like to say, if, we, if we're going to build this thing, let's build what we need. Because uh, I'm telling you, like I said, law enforcement is under a microscope. This could be one of the best things, and we have wonderful trainers at the college. And I foresee a lot of officers coming from out here uh, because we have one of the best programs for law enforcement at the ACC compared to Durham, Guilford, Randolph. And uh, I just see it a great opportunity, not only for our emergency service personnel, but for this county and for the town of Green Level. Uh, they, we have a wonderful working relationship out there. And, uh, I can see a lot of things coming to the town of Green Level if this happens. But we, I'm like you, Steve, I get tired of us uh, d doing something and then more money next time, more money next time have because we didn't do it. We need a training center and we need it bad. That's all I'm saying. Well, there's also the other issue of uh, <clears throat> we've had some tragedy occur because people didn't have, evidently, I don't know the, I don't know the facts behind it, but I mean, we had a young lady who accidentally discharged a firearm instead of a taser. And uh, I mean, it, training is a, is a critical, critical issue. We don't need lives lost because we didn't get sufficient training. You're absolutely right. I have one additional question. I'm not sure who it's for. Maybe the town of Green Level. Um, you're going to have complaints about gunshots and whatever. How do you plan to handle that? Yes, sir. When uh, we first start talking about training center, we did a survey around to where the training center will be located. So the residents, which I don't think it, it will be for as many residents around the, uh, where the training center will actually be, but everybody is aware of the shooting range, the possibility of, uh, we're looking for the possibility of job training because we have, we need, and like I said before this board before, and, and, and like Mr. Carter said, we are in a point now in this world that we, if we don't educate, we will have a problem. And so we've gotten to that point now where we, we need to me, start educating our young people and uh, giving them something to look forward to other than getting up in the morning and do something that the sheriff have to deal with. So this is what Green Level. Green Level have been uh, in the making for this center for a long time. We've, we've had, to answer your question again, we have had a survey from our neighboring houses because where the, uh, it's going to be located in Martin Marietta, uh, near Martin Marietta. And so we, with the relationship we had with Martin Marietta, we feel like, in which they agree, that this center too will help us with some of the things that we are needing for Green Level. And like you said, we need uh, businesses. We need to help our people. Our young people are struggling not only in Green Level, but the whole Alamance County and this center, everybody can't go or everybody is not, uh, how can I say, can go to college, a four year degree. So with Dr. Gatewood and his visions for the training center, it has really helped Alamance County with our young people. They're able to do something besides shoot Raw and harass or steal. And like I said before, and I'm going to sit down, when I was here before, I used to work for uh, Mr. Freeman. 
in the school system. I worked in the Burlington school system, and I worked for him. And he said, if we don't educate them, we'll pay for them later. And this is what we're doing now. We're paying for them. And John Freeman was a extremely intelligent individual. I used to work for him. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Uh, just a couple questions on the on the funding side, Dr. Gaywood. Yeah. You want to come up? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank it's all in ACC's budget uh, on the on the on the, on the uh, plan. Is that right? Well, actually, we made a proposal to you all but for some funding to assist with water and sewer. That's two point five million of the dollars that we are short for the training center, also, and, and um, I think that is where we asked for you to consider using some ARC funds. Five hundred thousand dollars for yes. funds. Um, and where I'm going with this is, and this may be a question from Ms. Brown, uh, what is Green Level's current water sewer capacity? Are there, are you planning on, you guys plan on using any art funds to increase that for economic development purposes? Can we tie in with this? Does this become a project not just for ACC, but a project for the town for Green Level for water sewer? And if we're digging one ditch, are we talk? we should be talking about broadband. We should talk about, I don't, I'm not sure what broadband service currently is in Green Level. But if we do that, it makes sense to, I think, that we can maybe talk talk ARPA and maybe in partnership with Green Level in its economic development for the whole area and it, it offsets some at least some of the costs that we're talking about here. The, thank you um, for the question. The There are ARPA funds available um, and the count, the Town Council has not decided how to spend those funds as yet. So I think there's an opportunity for partnership in developing the region. We're looking at Green Level as, in terms of a regional approach to the growth of the county. And I think it is important uh, to judge the growth of the whole county by the smaller towns, not just by the bigger cities. And we're looking to participate in that growth um, in terms of moving um, north. Um, there's not anything between Green Level and Roxborough. There's plenty of room for growth. <laughs> there, uh, we already have water and sewer. Um, the lines are not very far from um, where the training center is um, is located, and I think it's an opportunity to to work together. Well, if we're talking about hotels, if we're talking mm -hmm. about restaurants, then definitely an expansion of water and sewer. I think we probably have to do so. That, that's that's something I'm thinking about as, as we're looking at this. Um, uh, also, a question, Dr. Gatewood, and the school system has ESSER funds. Um, that are limited. Does ACC? I know ACC has some federal funds related to COVID. Uh, are, are there funds that can come from other sources that that we could put towards capital for ACC? So we have COVID dollars for sure, and we have some pretty serious restrictions that have come with COVID dollars. We did get special approval to upgrade our HVAC system in all of our buildings. Uh, and in fact, at Continuing Education, the Dillingham Center, we got special approval to uh, go beyond just upgrading for the purposes of fighting viruses and those kind of things. <coughs> you want to add to this, CD? Uh, well, you know, yeah, we, we have the ARC acronym is HERF instead of ESSER, okay. but, but yeah, same restrictions. It can't be used for capital, but we used it, like you said, for air conditioning air quality improvements. Now, I know the county, we can now use some of our ARPA money for capital. Did that change for you guys? Uh, yeah, no, we, we, we're not able to use it for, for capital purposes. No. But, but some of the requests down the line deal with not just capital, but, but new, I mean, new nursing services, uh, um, child care, those kind of things. Can, can, can your HERF funds be used for some of those to offset the cost of all of the projects? To focus more on training. I understand. As it stands, it it's not in the guidelines. Okay. Uh, the last question I think is the um, the use of the capital fund for uh, for ACC. As I understand it, there's 3.2 million 
above what's needed for debt service in the capital reserve is that 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 is correct we we you know as the commissioners recall we institute the property tax increase of 1.4 cents specifically for acc's portion of the finance plan early right. so we've been banking those proceeds so at this time the the current model the finance plan indicates there's almost 3.2 million dollars that would be available to use like a capital reserve that would not be needed for uh current debt or future debt payments or pay go either if you used all the 3.2 does that deplete the capital reserve for acc just to debt service that would if you used all the capital reserve up to the 3.2 million dollars you would still leave enough funding to do the planned pay go dollar amounts to pay the planned debt service for uh, the original 39.6 million or uh, bond premium if you added bond premium to that um, as well as PAYGO as well yes as well as the plan PAYGO but that ties it to the capital plan we have specific dollar amounts for the next multiple years of uh, PAYGO amounts the college is to get so and then if they have an emergency then there's nothing to no uh, that's correct unless you uh, <coughs> wanted to issue the authorized but unissued bond debt which the debt service payments would be in the plan even if you exhaust the capital reserves okay thank you thank you during the break, we're going to retrain Mr. Turner on this is the last question. <laughs> That's a series of questions. <laughs> That's the lawyer in him. That's the lawyer in him. <laughs> we will take a short break. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Dr. Thank, Thank you, you, Thank you very much. So much. Thank you. Ten minute break. We're back in session. Miss Evans. Good morning, commissioners. Um, before you, I bring a request for us to be able to close out and submit the final lottery um, application fund. So this will close out and return $495,018.17. These are coming from funds that are left over from completed projects where there were projects that were coming under budget or if there were other funding sources that were identified after the project started um, put into your budget I'm sorry into your packet was a listing of those uh, projects as well as amounts so if there are any questions and what this approval will also do is we'll submit this to um, NCDPI and once they have approved the application we'll be able to amend the budget any questions motion to approve I have one oh. yes sir <laughs> I actually have three, but I'm on. You answered the first one earlier. I just want to ask you, uh, we, you. You told me before how much we get in the past, and it's mm -hmm. not a uniform number. That's correct. Uh, and you're looking to uh, take 495k. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is this: uh, Looking at your this this type of spending is quote unquote funded, mm -hmm. where the list of the previous is unfunded. That's correct. Okay. Just want to make sure I got that right. Uh, and the 495K is transacted in the capital reserve account. There's actually, um, you'll see these transactions in the school's capital project fund within the audit. There is a line item in there that shows the revenues that we receive from state lottery funds. Excellent. And then the details below for the project is in the expenditures. Perfect. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We have a second. We have a motion. Second. A motion to second. Any other discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Haygood. So, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, I asked uh, Sherry Hook to present this information about the uh, Board of Elections uh, building, where we are, and to get some guidance from the board. So. Thank you, Someone's phone is up here. Oops. Is it yours? <laughs> no, but it's all uh, cracked up. We'll uh, we'll and find the proper it? owner of that. that. Thank you. Um, that might have been Derek Brown's. That's uh, I believe it's Mr. Krebs. Okay. So we'll we'll get that back to the college. Thank oh, you. Sorry. Thank you. No, sorry glad you said that. that. Thank you. Okay, um, commissioners, uh, what I'm bringing forward today is discussion about 1128 South Main Street, which is the big building that we have talked about for Board of Elections. So we had a 60-day due diligence period, which ended a few weeks ago, and we extended that for another 30 days. That due diligence is going to end on February 13th. 
Um, so during this 90 day time, what we have done has, um, we have gotten an assessment of the building, we've gotten appraisal on the building, we've surveyed the property, and we've done some preliminary space planning for that building. So as you'll see in the memo, um, the building was priced at $995,000. The appraisal came in at $925,000. So there is a $70,000 difference there. During the assessment of the building, um, there were some major repair concerns that came, came through. The HVAC units on that building are the original units, so they will need to be replaced. The fire alarm system needs to be upgraded. Um, there's a roof repair over the elevator room. There was actually water in the elevator room. Um, and then the emergency generator did not start when they did the um, assessment out there. So we don't know if it's broken or if there's something about the power, but we're going to assume that it needs to be replaced as well. So we you have the age of that unit. I do not. I, I do. I'm sure it was in the assessment. I did not bring that with me. Um, sure. Just how old is this building? This building's over 20 years, okay. around 20 Thank years you. old. So we're a rough estimate of those repairs is 131,000. Okay. We also did some preliminary space planning, and this was very rough space planning, um, just to look to see if the size of the building would be sufficient. So this building is around the same size as the Medicap building that we looked at. However, because it um, has an elevator and stairs, it did reduce the usable footage, square footage in there. Um, and so when we looked at this building, we also looked at could that drive-through area be enclosed. Mm -hmm. So I have a, if, if that drive-through area is enclosed, there is enough storage and enough room in that building. There were some concerns, I think initially when we looked at that building, we thought that we could put storage on the second floor. That building was not meant for a lot of weight on the second floor. In fact, I think the capacity on that second floor is around 48 people. So what we would need to do is enclose that drive-through area to make sure that there is enough storage room. So we are looking at about 650,000 for interior renovations and another 200,000 to enclose that drive-through. So um, that's about $850,000. So when you put that all together, you're coming up with a um, total price for purchasing the building, repairs, renovation of 1.976 million. We do have money um, in capital reserves for this. It also could be, um, some of this could be paid for by issuing debt. So what I'm before the commissioners today is to get some direction on what to do with this building. So what I see are three options. You move forward with the purchase of the building at the current price. We go back and we negotiate a lower price since we know that it's under, under market and also there's repairs, so maybe we look at a, um, an offer that's about 200000 less than the original offer, or we just decide to walk away and look for another building. And um, so I'm just looking for direction from the Board of Commissioner on this, Commissioners on that. Well, that's the old name yeah. American National? It, American building. National down by Sheets. And I think the BB&T building, am I not mistaken, is it not also available now on South Main Street? Is one I of the two banks not, are going to be? I have not heard that, if it I is. Know, um, I think BB&T and SunTrust have merged, so they're probably going to merge. <coughs> Something will happen but probably between one of those two buildings. I'm just curious if there's going to be another building available. And do we have the square well. footage in those, on those, those two buildings? Those buildings yeah. would be an unknown. So is the BB&T building the one that's been for sale for a while? I was thinking it had, but I'm not sure. Yeah, so because was the school mine. system was looking at that. Mm -hmm. And um, Dr. Yeah. Thorpe is gone, and I know um, they were looking at possibly renting that till they found mm -hmm. the right thing because the seller's gone, relocating some things. And, and uh, we had a fit over how much they were thinking about remodeling that building. So the last time I looked at that building when it was for sale, it was under contract. So I don't know if that's fallen through or not. I, can I 
I don't either. But, uh, I'm just at. thinking there's some other opportunities out there for us. Sherry, can you just give me a, since I'm not even a carpenter or anything like that, can you tell me what $650,000 does to the inside of a building? So for that building, basically what we're going to do is pretty much gut the first floor. And so what we would do is um, separate that building in half and half of that building is going to be, uh, become storage for voting machines. And it's not just storage, we're going to have to run a lot of electrical in there, um, overhead electrical so that they can test the machines before they go out um, to the voting sites. So that's part of it. Um, there's going to have to be some electrical in the rest of the building that's upfitted. And like I said, sprinkler system needs to be upfitted. Um, also, that's going to include some of your design cost as well. So there is, the building, the shell of the building is in really good shape, but it's got to be remodeled or redesigned for the use of the Board of, of Elections. And right now, they've got area places where they store things. They're just all over the place. They're all over the place. And if we were to move forward with this and enclose that drive through it would put everything, their offices, all of their equipment, all of their storage would be there. Is there any expansion capability in there? Is there any growth so growth? that, it's on a very large lot. Um, so there is expansion capability. I mean, you'd have to grade and that sort of thing. You'd have to tear up the parking lot to do that. But there is, um, I can't remember exactly. I think that it's over an acre that that lot sits on. So there is quite a bit of room in the front of it. Not much in the in the rear, but the side and front have um, capability for expansion. So we're now looking at, well, $24,000 short of $2 million. Mm -hmm. And we initially were talking about $1 million. So we're not quite for well the purchase, for yes, purchase, for purchase yeah. only, yes. Uh, yeah, we knew we were going to have to do renovations at that yeah. time, too. Yeah. But nothing like we're talking about now. Miss, Miss Hooks, how, what's the square footage of that building we're talking it's about? It's just under 11,000. It's 11,000, mm -hmm. under 11. Yeah. Just under, yeah. It's yeah. like 10, 8, something like that. Yeah, I thought it was just the other way. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, you know, just doing some calculations here with the additions, it looks like it's, it's about $153 a square foot, guys, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Now, I'm just going to tell you, I'm in the real estate market right now. $150 a square foot ain't, ain't bad. I put a bid on the house last week, $184 I know. Yeah. Dollars a square foot. And it was, you know, four years old. <laughs> well, they're brand new. So, I don't know what to do here, guys and ladies. I just, I just don't know. It's, it's a hard one. I know it fits in the sense, like, it fits. <laughs> As far as per square foot is right. going, as far as things are being traded out in the marketplace, it's, mm -hmm. it's right there. I think you gave this document to me, did you not? I think maybe this. Mr. Hagen, yeah, I right think so. Yes. 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 yes, that well, that's for me. Introduce this into. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, what I'm holding up is for those that cannot see it, obviously, uh, this is a recommended judicial services campus outlay several months ago and at that point um, in the I guess what would be the right over there <laughs> would be an area that you had proposed possibly for the Board of Elections early on mm -hmm. um, the negative of using this track would be it's down the road potentially two to five years um, the positive would be that it's not going to be a whole lot more cost, if any, to build it brand new the way you want it built. And uh, it would be close to the county seat as opposed to how far out is, is this bank building? Mile and a half? I think it's like less than two miles. I less think. than two miles. Yeah. So a mile and a half is not too far. <laughs> um, but the point being, you know, it's what we would like to have is everybody coming to one spot and being able to do all their business as opposed to what we have currently, courthouse to building to building to building and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not proposing that we wait that length of time because the Board of Elections needs the space right now. Um, at the same time, I hate to spend $2 million in order to do this in a building that, um, as you indicated, is there expansion, 
may or may not be adequate for the long term. So um, can I can I just mention that I think Dawn Hurdle is on by Zoom. I, I forgot to mention that earlier. And Dawn is our new um, Board of Elections director. I think she's <coughs> still on. Mm -hmm. In case you have questions for Dawn, I'm sorry. <laughs> Dawn, I would I would ask, uh, and congratulations by the way. We're sorry to lose Kathy, but we're really really pleased you're there. Um, and we can we see her? Muted. We cannot. Uh, there. there you go. Okay, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, yes. what are, Thank what are, you. <laughs> what are your thoughts? I would. I mean, we are busting out at the scenes currently. I mean, we have stuff. We have our equipment at one place. Uh, we're renting about five different storage units, um, storing our supplies for election day and one stop. And now we are, have taken over um, the building up the road. Um, I, I call it the county annex building. The annex conference room. Yeah. <laughs> the location that we have. Um, a lot of our supplies are in that uh, in that meeting room there, and it, it's hard to when we're planning for the election. As much as it's being changed here lately, we we get one thing we're at one place working, we get everything updated, and then now they throw another wrench at us, and we're having to go back. If we were all in one building, it would serve such a wonderful purpose. It is, it's, it's hard having three different, like four different locations with our, all of our equipment and supplies. How long do you think it would take to remodel this kind of building? So I think you're, you're <coughs> probably looking at six to nine months. Okay. The, um, some of this is gonna be because we have not um, completely laid out how the floor would look so we'd have to go through that design process before we could get into construction. Okay, when is the hypothetical complex supposed to start? Courthouse and all that. So that that particular spot across the street uh, that's part of the footprint also? Like if a board of elections went there, if that was the plan, how long does that start? That, that if, particular sorry. building was uh, one of the farthest out, um, was not uh, incorporated in the debt capacity the county had at the time and hinges on the acquisition of private property so it, it's it it would take buying an additional piece of property to make that happen so it it's no guarantee that uh, we would be able to do that so it's a from a conceptual perspective at the time it makes perfect sense and it still could happen and it and it could indeed happen but uh, uh, I think that is an unknown that's difficult to, to guess. Well, and I'm saying how long it's going to take you to remodel a building that you haven't bought and paid for yet, which takes a little bit of time, $2 million, and then I don't think you're going to be renting where you are exactly as much as a pain in the butt it is for anybody working the Board of Elections. It's going to be $2 million worth of rent till possibly that could be done. I'd rather move once and really do it right because we don't need another extra building that we're going to fix up for somebody really pretty and then sell it. And um, I, I agree with John, John Paisley, I agree with Chairman Paisley, sorry John, <laughs> that you know it, we need everything needs to be as much possible in the same location because it's all tied together anyway. And um, I mean that's a lot of money to go buy something if we've even thought hypothetically about possibly working that in to really suit the needs of the public. So. Um, and uh, the you know the capacity would remain the, for the future on the property across the street. Um, so if there were some other county building need, if the, if the board decides to go forward with attempting to secure this building on South Main Street for the Board of Elections, you still have that capacity there. It just uh, it may be something else uh, in the future that's determined it's needed to be constructed across the street other than the Board of Elections. Well, I know we're not monopoly, and we just don't buy up all these you know particular hotels and stuff on them. And um, I, I don't know, that's, um, <clears throat> it's like, we just got this money and we'll just buy a building and then we'll remodel it. And I mean, I know, I don't know, this, this, this is just so much money involved here and it's not mine. It's everybody in this county's. And um, I'd rather do it, I mean, we'd have to wait a little bit in construction. 
we'll be fine because as long as everything is safe and secure and how the elections do election boards is nothing to do with our buildings. That comes down from government when it comes to, oh, we're going to change it all of a sudden. You're going to have a new machine. You're going to have this. It's like, get it right. You know, I look at Iraq and they dip their thumbs. Hey, I voted. How simple is that in ink? You know, maybe we need to go to that. You don't get to cheat on that way. You got two thumbs. So, um, but I don't know. It's just, that's a, I feel like we're robbing Peter to pay Paul or Becky to pay Betty when we get it all right here. And so um, that's just my opinion. Let me make sure we understand. I'm not proposing that we not do this building on South Main, no. but I am wanting us to think hard before. Um, <coughs> I, I would almost propose that we counter offer on this. Now we have February 13th is our deadline, and that's right around the corner, which means Literally. we would have to have. It's some, a Sunday, isn't it? It yeah. is it's, it's next week. You'd, you'd have to nail this something weekend. down Friday. It's yes. this weekend, so we yeah. would have to do it this week. Friday, mm -hmm. 5 p.m. Do we have time to renegotiate? Yes, I think we have time to uh, send them a counter offer, and uh, they were very responsive immediately to the request to extend another 30 days, so we sent that multiple formats to their uh, attorneys and to their broker. They came right back. So. I, I'm sure they're expecting a, resp a response from the county, mm -hmm. and they will view it quickly, I'm sure. Uh, Chairman, I'm, I'm just curious, uh, yes, uh, could you elaborate on what kind of uh, offer you want to make to the owners of the bean? I'm just very disappointed in the amount of uh, construction costs it's gonna, that's going to be required mm -hmm. to bring Repair. this building up to what we thought we were purchasing. Repairs. Uh, yeah. Repairs, primarily. Uh, well, uh, some ideas. Just want to see what you all think about what, What's the number of the repairs? So um, the repairs were 131 and the building uh, appraised at 70 under. So 200,000. Could we go to them? And could we go to them? Talking like uh, uh, Chairman Paisley's talking about, could we go to them and show them? The things that we have found wrong with the building and see if they will uh, subtract that from the offering price because so if they would do yes. that that would get us close yeah. Yeah, that's, that's exactly where i was going bill mm -hmm. i also think we might want to talk with dr thorpe mm -hmm. and get the details on that bb and t building and just for a comparison purpose mm -hmm. and uh, i might have sure something i think that was sold i think i might have something there for you steve because oh, you the school yeah. system I, I sit on the abss mm -hmm. school board and we they talked about it and i take I take notes like a crazy it's man. It's got $2 million close to it. They're going to have to redo everything. And they were renting it, leasing it. Just so give me a second to go the through square footage was smaller than yeah. the current day, but I, 11. I, I, so I thought I thought BB&T is bigger. Yeah, it is. I think. Commissioner oh, so? Tory just small. found online in December mm -hmm. that building okay. sold. Yes. Yeah. Sold in December. Just this past December, it was reported in the news December 21st. Okay, so, so that just happened. So that's not an option for you. 16th, excuse me, December you know 16th. The, can can you story. see what the sale price was on it? 1.9 million. Mm. Wow, right there in our wheelhouse. And it needs repair. And it was, uh, can you, do you have any? More things like square footage of the building. Just try. No, that's okay. probably not going to be in this. No we'll worries. scroll quick to see if we find more no details. But uh, thank you. Uh, nope. Tori found it. Eleven thousand one hundred and four square feet. So it's almost the exact same size. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, Jeremy's usually hanging on there someplace. I think I see him up there. One point six. You said. Two point six acres. Of land. It's a little bit bigger. Interesting. Any chance? Thank you very much. Good information. So if we decide we want to make a counter offer. Do we also need to decide, the 13th is mm -hmm. next door. Mm -hmm. yeah. So do we also need to say either accept or reject? And we don't want to do that publicly, obviously. So um, um, I'm, I'm, I think that when we initially started talking about this building, the board gave the county manager authority to negotiate. So right. um, I think if we had an idea of, I, I think, if we say we know we don't want to pay 995 and we let the county manager negotiate with some conversations to you guys but we're not just paying 995 we're paying 650,000 to upfit it and then 131,000 for something else so we're not paying 
$995,000 for this building. No. We Not for a, us to walk in and be able to use as the Board of Elections. We have a closed session coming up at the end of this session. Would that be an appropriate conversation for discuss the acquisition of real estate and what we're willing to pay for it? We're beyond our February 13 deadline, that's my concern. Yes. The February 13 deadline I'm is today we have a right, closed session. Is Sunday. Um, so do we need to I will yeah. redraft my motion <laughs> that I'm asking for and yes to answer your question we um, can add going into closed session um, further discussions around this particular um, address and or do we not adjourn this meeting do we continue it to pick a time uh, Thursday evening or Thursday afternoon or Friday or or sometime for what purpose for the purpose of making a final decision no you don't need to do that all no, right that's the question I say sorry Same yes no that's not necessary mr. chairman quick question do we have a general sense of how long um, what's the shortest amount of time it would take to design <coughs> design and build a new board of elections so um, I have a designer that worked with me on uh, plans for Medicap, so they're already very familiar with the needs of Board of Elections, so I hate to speak for him, but I'm going to say 90 days at least. And did we say to, to, des design to design? And build? Design and build, so. <laughs> oh, design and build. Yeah. I thought you said just so, design. Well, so when you say okay. 90 days, you mean actual plans. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, um, and then to build another? I think you're looking at at least six months, so I think nine months um, at the earliest that you'd be able to get into that building. <coughs> and we pay that designer to design, design that building that we're going to remodel for six hundred fifty thousand mm -hmm. one thirty one. Is, is there any sense of whether the, um, the owner would agree to an uh, extension to get us to the next meeting? Uh, I mean, we can certainly ask for that. Yeah, that's another option to, to have. This last time we did that. Uh, we asked that uh, we were not required to give any additional earnest money and that uh, if we said no it would not count against us you know because we can't walk away from this offer and get all but I think a hundred dollars of our earnest money back mm -hmm. so um, I'm, I don't know they were very quick to respond to us in our request for an additional 30 days so it's it's possible yeah we have other costs we've already paid for a survey for example a title search things that we already have expended monies on this side. So are we suggesting, and I'm saying this doesn't necessarily take a vote, uh, but are we as a group asking one our county manager to renegotiate the cost and or ask for an extension? Is that the board's Or should consensus? this be discussed in a closed session? Yeah. I think we need to keep this closed. I was going to ask, is it possible that we can attend this closed session and then come back and talk about it? Absolutely. Thank you. Is it desire of this board to take this matter into closed session later in the meeting? Yes. Uh, I'll make a motion to that effect. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank so, you. So, Madam Attorney, <laughs> thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure, Paisley. I, I would ask if it's possible for uh, Sherry Hook to accompany us into the closed session for that particular part. That would be my request. Uh, yes. I think she's more intimately familiar with the details of the project than I am from the design perspective. So if, that, if that's okay with the board sure. and with uh, Attorney Bechtel? Absolutely. Okay, sure. great. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Hook, thank you. Okay, we're now going to move into our... Uh, budget amendment section and an another Brian. Good morning. Yeah. <laughs> another lawyer. Another, another dang lawyer. Uh, we, got, we got enough up here, that's for sure. Um, I'm, here, I'm here on behalf of the Parks Department. Oh, to, uh, you can be seated now. <laughs> requesting permission to uh, accept a grant from the uh, um, Visitors Bureau uh, for uh, 
their annual $5,000 maximum grant that they help local agencies uh, do some publicity, do some advertising for local attractions in the county. So we apply for this uh, routinely every year. Uh, we were happy to be awarded um, tentatively this, but I need your permission to um, accept this $5,000 grant. So it would be used to advertise Parks Department amenities, namely this year I think we'll be focusing on radio and digital advertising for Cane Creek Mountain and for Har River Trail. And there's no county match. There's no county match. So okay. moved. Second. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank Quick you. question. <laughs> yes. On the issue of green level on that uh, <laughs> chamber page, are there any other municipalities within Alabama County that weren't listed prominently on that page? Yes. Can we make yeah, sure it was just, it was, so, so the the website features everyone in the county in every municipality that was a kind of a separate page that was featuring a, a few different spots that were more popular from a tourist perspective i think mebbin was on there and then saxon hall was on there um it wasn't really a comprehensive section um but i think if green level wants to be included in that then we'll do that and if there's any other municipalities who are interested uh, we could certainly accommodate that it's just a quick change on the website okay. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Okay, Mr. Hill. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, come before you today. I request a couple of things um, relating to all things uh, Swepsonville, which is a closed landfill. Mr. Carter said in about three years ago when we initiated some of this activity. But um, there's some environmental issues that we're working with DEQ on, specifically landfill gas and um, methane, and also uh, groundwater. So a quick update over the last six months, we have uh, installed three sets of nested wells on residential properties to mm -hmm. look at uh, groundwater. And uh, we've also had to react to some elevated levels of methane so we've done some trenching and put some uh, monitors in <clears throat> on the landfill and, us, and also on the residential properties. We are in an extremely good situation right now with DUQ. We spent a lot of time the last three years working with them. <clears throat> and um, what this money is for is two contracts with municipal engineering, $16,000 to continue landfill gas monitoring to get us through the end of this fiscal year. And the other is 83000 for additional funds that may be necessary for groundwater assessment. We do not know that. Where we are right now, the state is willing to allow us to continue to monitor only, and there is no more activity on the books through the end of the year. That can change with one monthly report. We never know. So the I would tell you the... Uh, the money for the landfill gas, uh, we will probably use the majority of that by the end of the year. The 83000 for groundwater may or may not be used according to DEQ instruction. So we need your okay on those two contracts and then to pay for those um, to take out $99,000 from in essence what was money put away years ago for post-closure activity um, at Swepsonville. That, is, that was not required by law, but it is money we have there, I think just north of 400,000. And um, hopefully some of that money will flow right back at the end of the year. Motion Any operate. questions? Don't you have some new pavement? Yes, we just finished um, the repaving of the, uh, the landfill at Austin Quarter, the convenience center and the major entry road. Just finished that up. Um, we're down for just uh, lacking uh, retainment at this point. The project is finished other than a couple little minor issues and came in a little under budget. Well, I had somebody contact me about how nice your pavement was mm -hmm. at the landfill. It was, um, I think we have to take our hats off to the, um, to the construction people and our engineering firm and with the landfill staff that we were able to accomplish all that. Um, working seven days a week, we, we took four hours down. So there was aggravation. We certainly saw it on our Google responses from the public. They didn't like having to wait a few minutes for the re repairs to happen, but it worked out really well. I don't think we like to wait in general. <laughs> so I appreciate all you do, Richard. You're sure. the leader. Sure. 
Mm -hmm. I'll second Mr. Carter's motion. Any other comments? What was the motion? To approve. To approve. Oh. Uh, quick question. I, I just have a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, so you said there's, there's, we've set aside four hundred thousand dollars to handle long-term effects of the swept post closing closure. the swept post closure. Yes. Landfill. Okay. That's uh, Swepsonville only. Okay. Um, what other effects, uh, other than water runoff and methane, do we could we anticipate? Well, it's a very complicated question um, that would take a long time to respond. When Title V came about in the early 90s, the counties were allowed and municipalities were allowed to walk away from landfills that did not have the specific liner requirements that the new law requires from EPA. And the counties and cities were told 30 years, they'd kind of be on the hook. Well, about year 28, DEQ came back and said, well, we're gonna, we're gonna rethink that. So this is a, an endless problem, if you will, or potentially endless problem. Um, what I can tell you, the North Star of both DEQ and us as staff is the protection of the residents yeah. to make sure they're not affected, whether it be gas or groundwater. And um, that's, what, that's what guides every decision. I, ca I can't sit here and tell you that I know what may happen in the future. I simply do not. But I can tell you we've come a long way in the last three years from what Mr. Carter said in with us to where we are today. We were looking at millions of dollars of issues then, and we've got this down to a very workable project. Mr. Hager, do we have an estimate of the uh, dollar cost for water, for water for the residents that have effects of um, Swepsonville leakage from the... From the uh, I believe that was around a half a million dollars. I, I had that, uh, I had, I had that figure, but uh, I'm thinking it was around a half a million dollars. And I would suggest to the commissioners that that, that really should be a project that we give serious thought to. In that, uh, what we've heard from the state is that it will uh, put the county in a good position from a life safety perspective. Since right. these folks, there's only a handful of homes. Uh, I think we estimated four hundred thousand dollars for that project on our last time we updated the board about it. So, that, I would say it is eligible for ARP spending. Is our understanding it would be running town of Swepsonville water to these houses that are close by the, the landfill. So, definitely a, uh, a a reasonable and thoughtful way to consider spending four hundred thousand dollars in ARP money. And I think putting the existing residences uh, in, in a safer place. Absolutely. Thank you. And we could partnership. DEQ has been very vocal about what Brian just said, <coughs> and that that would buy us time for us to be able to evaluate what it needs to be done in the future. And the fact that the residents are protected just means everything to them. Mm -hmm. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor <laughs> signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Didn't you have to announce you. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, I am before you asking to uh, and accept additional monies in the amount of six thousand two hundred and twenty nine dollars that is issued um, by the state in our state aid funding that comes from the North Carolina Aid to Public Libraries Fund. Motion to approve. Got a question. What are you going to use these funds for? Um, the additional money will um, most likely come to the be used for the purchase of additional books and materials for the library. Okay. Thank you. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? <clears throat> it's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're not Miss Day. <laughs> I am Sky Sullivan, the director of the Family Justice Center. Um, I am here seeking approval to apply for a grant from the Governor's Crime Commission. This is a grant we apply for every two years. Um, so it's a reoccurring grant. It's a VOCA grant, Victims of Crime Act, under the Specialized Services and Model Priority, which is for Family Justice Centers. 
Um, if funded again, the, this money will be used to fund 2.5 positions at the Family Justice Center, therapy for victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, and human trafficking and elder abuse, um, emergency financial support for victims, general operations of the Family Justice Center, and supplies for partners in the building, as well as training for partners. Um, that due to COVID, there is no match required this time. Typically, we do in-kind matches and um, salary matches for this grant. And I'm requesting for approval to apply and then approval to accept monies if we are granted this grant. Motion to approve. Seven. Hold it, Deborah. Yes, ma'am. I'm on the Governor's Crime Commission. I'm on the CVS. I'm on the Grant Scoring and Voting Committee. Okay. So I don't get any money, but I, I don't want yeah, anything no, you, to jinx this. Be, because, well, it's not a jinx question of law, so okay. I'm glad you brought it up. So you need to ask your fellow commissioners to be recused from this vote. So we need to back up from what Sky just asked about and concentrate. Your vote now would be a motion to recuse Pam from voting on this issue for the reason she just stated, because that is a clear conflict. Motion to approve. Second. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All in favor, saying aye. 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 Okay. And since because you do eyes, and there's nothing wrong with that, Pam, I'm going to ask you to actually step off the podium because it is the only way we can assure the public we're fully complying and ethically doing everything we should and go ahead now with her vote. Can we have a motion and a second, I believe? Mm -hmm. We do. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Again, you know. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Ms. Thompson, you may return. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Excellent. you, Deborah. Excellent. Sure, we appreciate certainly. it. We appreciate all your help. I've been that moment for a year now. <laughs> 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 yeah, Tom. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> DSS. I sure will. That's right. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Um, I'm here beha on behalf of social services to request two budget amendments. Both of those are on your agenda this morning. Um, we'll start out with the first one that is specific for funding for our Share the Warmth program. This um, program is a supplemental energy program where the funds are used to assist eligible households regardless of their energy source. Um, the funds are derived, although they come from the state, they are through donations that are made through Piedmont Natural Gas for, from customer payments, and then they're dispersed to counties accordingly. We use a budget estimate at the beginning of the fiscal year to put a placeholder because we're unsure of what these funds will look like. So the estimated amount at the beginning of this fiscal year was $2,927. Once that funding was actually released in December, we learned that we received right much more than what we had anticipated to receive, which was an additional $12,767.23. So we are here today to ask for that adjustment to our budgeted line. Um, there's no county match required for that funding. I'll make a motion to it. I actually have one question. Okay. okay. Um, Imagine that, right? Imagine that. This is what happens when Bill takes notes before the meeting. <laughs> Keep paper and pencil away from me. Uh, I just want to ask you something because I was talking to someone about this program okay. that you offer, and they asked me a question that I didn't have an answer, okay. but I thought you may. Uh, what are the uh, what are some of the requirements for people to qualify for this program? So what I'll tell you is this funding source actually tacks on to our SIP program, which is our crisis intervention. So those are the requirements that they would actually meet in order for that to be. So if the SIP application is approved and they have reached that allocation, Share the Warmth funds can be tacked on to that as well. Where, where could someone find that information? Um, it is available on the DHHS website. Excellent. Um, you can also contact our agency and we'll be happy to go through those requirements. Like a local phone well. call would mm -hmm. do it. Excellent. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'll second the motion. Any other comments? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. So moving on to the second one, this is in regards to administrative funding that's being provided by the state to support the delivery of the pandemic leap program. 
as you remember last time I was here to set up that allocation um, and then they decided they were also going to give us some administrative funding for that um, and I'll just reiterate that the low income energy assistance program also provides assistance with energy cost um, to our community the administrative funds that were provided are in the amount of one hundred and thirty eight thousand four hundred and forty one dollars again there is no county match and it is used to help with the service delivery and we're just asking for approval and for that account to be established motion to approve so moved Second. 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 <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> He's filling the curve. So yeah. <laughs> all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Again, unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you. And Miss Day, good to have you here. Yeah. Um, and we're telling uh, Mr. Haygood he can't leave. We're going to tell you the same. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate all the wonderful work you've done. Absolutely. Amen yeah. to that. Okay. Well, good morning, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Uh, the next budget amendment you have for your consideration is an amendment that will increase the current fiscal year uh, detention center budget by a total of $1,012,500. And this funding is based on calculated ICE revenues for the period of February 1, 2022 through June 30th of 2022. The uh, contract with ICE runs on an annual basis, but it runs on the federal year, so it will uh, uh, have to be renewed again next next January so we're requesting that the board consider amending the detention centers budget to receive ice funding and then budget that same ice funding to be expended uh, between February 1 and June 30th uh, based on the current negotiated terms with ice the uh, entire 12-month contract would be two million four hundred sixty three thousand seven hundred fifty dollars that will take us all the way through January 31st of next year but we will handle the majority of these funds through the regular budget process ice revenues will be projected the cost for the program will balance with the ice revenue so have the sheriff here if you have any questions about the current uh, uh, arrangements with uh, ice and the request is to amend the detention center budget and one question of the county manager mm -hmm. if we do not approve this budget how much will it cost the county in tax dollars well, the, uh, we've, we've worked very hard to keep all county tax dollars out of the ICE program. So if, if you do not approve this budget, that would be the end of uh, the ICE program because I don't think the board would budget any county dollars for this. So, so what would it cost us? I think the sheriff might be able to speak to the, to the uh, cost of the program. From county dollars perspective, there would be no, no cost. I'm not, you're, you're not understanding my question. How much revenue? There's in, thank you. <laughs> How much revenue will be lost if we turn this project down. So the, we currently estimate $1,012,500 worth of revenue. That is the same amount of expenditures that we are budgeting. The sheriff doesn't always expend those funds uh, depending on the number of uh, detainees that he holds. So. We, we're guaranteed 50 beds at $135 right. a day to look after these inmates. If the beds are not full, they still have to pay for the beds which, uh, you know, it's hard to sit here and tell you each year what it'd be, but uh, we're not losing any money at this point in time. With that grin, does that mean we're gaining money? <laughs> yes. Potential, Thank you. right? <laughs> Potential. So the, 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 what we've understood from ICE <clears throat> is that they require the capacity to be able to bring up to 50 inmates here at any moment. So uh, because they don't have uh, 50 inmates in the detention center right now, they are paying for the ability to do that at any time. So they pay this revenue and we keep the capacity. We keep all the uh, associated costs to make sure that can happen if ICE uh, decides to bring all 50 uh, right. at one time. So. That's right. And I understand too that there was an article this morning that maybe attacked the Sheriff's Office for the ICE program. Yes, sir. In, a, in another publication to go unmentioned. And if it only uh, tells the truth. Amen. Um, <laughs> and implied that maybe the detainees were being held in somewhat less than acceptable circumstances. They are regulations and rules that ICE has that we have to follow. We follow those rules and uh, to the T. And what's the average uh, tenure for an ICE detainee in the Alamance County Sheriff's Office? Well, they come in, we keep, in their two days, they're gone. Mm -hmm. Two days that, that, that's what I that's why I was trying to go right there. 
When's the last not, time? Not you six months or Yeah, I think we've got uh, a couple right now. I'm not sure, but uh, we we it's really going to pick up once we have the asylum. Uh, we got to build two rooms in our in our gymnasium for the federal officers right. to do uh, meet with the asylum seekers here in the county. Your beds your beds will probably be full once that's done. Okay, let me ask you a question. Why are they asking you for asylum? Why? How did they get here? How did they get here? No, I'm curious because we are not the border. So hey, right. why are they asking Elements County for asylum? Because they're they want to fill fifty beds. Gotcha. <laughs> I think Ms. Thompson, you're asking how did the how did that illegal person, folks get yeah, here? Yeah, I mean, I mean, we all aren't stupid. I mean, this is human beings, but we're watching talking. what's going on yeah, our borders. They're, and they're, wonder, they're crossing the border every yeah, day. I, it's really strange that they traveled, whoever they is, from all over the world, all the way from there to here, and they ask for asylum here. That's a lot of mileage to get here somehow to now need asylum. I got a call this weekend where a bus uh, load come in uh, and we're dropped off. Uh, and that's, you know, that's all I can tell you. Well, let me just make a statement. The, the biggest thing that is killing people from 18 to 40 years old is fentanyl. It's not COVID, it's fentanyl. And it's coming across our borders and regardless of what's walking it across, that's not the issue. It is coming across, and people are dying because it ain't. It's it's not something you like, and you can't wait to get excited about taking. It's something you have to have because it is owning you, and um, it infuriates me when I see the me deaths too. of this and accidental deaths where somebody thinks they're taking something else, and then that's fentanyl and they die. There were some great things on my showed them on my Facebook about young people that have been addicted to this that were at parties that took this stuff. We still make that choice to put something in our mouth. It's it's just a nightmare and I I God, it's, something's got to happen. I mean we're gonna it's, we're taking out generations of people, whether they're leaving this world or they're staying addicted. You are just destroying families. Trust me. We heard some of the officers today that gave uh, Narcan. Guess what the drug was they were taking? Fentanyl. Mm -hmm. And they'd have been dead if the officers had not. Well, just understand, as great as Narcan is, it is manipulated to get to the next get high. So this is, you know, we it's like the internet. Great. And then here comes all the porn and all the awful things that can be part of something. You build something great and evil's going to come up and smack you in the face. And that's exactly what this is. <coughs> and if we don't start getting real about drugs it's getting younger and younger that's all I'm going to say it's killing, killing it's not well, what you're seeing uh, since the border's been open we've seen a tremendous increase in the fentanyl, the heroin the cocaine that's coming into this county we're probably not getting 1% of the drugs coming into this county right now I know I'm going to move that we increase the budget to uh, enable the renewal of the ICE contract. Second. I just have one question. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and I don't think it's going to be very difficult. I'm just trying to square it in my head. There is a um, object 412-000, salary and wages. I'm just looking at the high price items on your on this thing here. I just want to ask you two questions. All right. I guess what my question is, and maybe I have to get from the finance guys to uh, ladies, excuse me, uh, to um, to answer this. My question is: Do you segregate these expenditures from the salaries? Do you ex do, do you uh, let me make sure I rate this? Do you separate these expenditures from your overall detention budget? Yes, sir. Okay. We, yes, so, sir. Uh, we I said this is a this could. I'm just working on my spreadsheet. This could be an addition. If I put this number in my spreadsheet, this is going to be an addition to your detention budget. A, a, a budget that you received last June 30th. Separate call center. Okay. Thank you. That's the only budget. That's why I just had one other question. Can you tell me what contracted services is? It's just a blanket. It's just a, a blanket. I was just wondering what is contracted services. <clears throat> where we have, you know, when we sign a contract, 
for uh, for services uh, to the federal government. For instance, if we sign a contract, just okay. signed a new contract. So uh, your health care costs are in health care okay. costs figured out. All that stuff is so it's a whole bunch of line items. Oh yeah. Okay, great. It is. Great. Thank you. I appreciate it. Interpretation Sheriff. services, things of that nature. Like I said, I was just curious, trying to get the numbers squared mm -hmm. in my head and how you account for that particular number coming in. So thank you, Sheriff. Appreciate well, it. Any other discussion? There's a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, we have one public speaker, Sean Francis. He is not here. I saw Mr. Him. Francis? I saw him leave. <laughs> Just giving him a shot. Right. <laughs> okay. We're being new speakers. Um, I say, are there any county commissioner responses? We'll go to the county attorneys. So, following the county manager's report and pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143.318.11a3, 5, and 6, I ask the board move into closed session to consult with an attorney employed or retained by the public body in order to preserve the attorney-client privilege between the attorney and the public body and to consider the qualifications, competence, performance, character, fitness, conditions of appointment or conditions of initial employment of an individual public officer or employee or prospective public officer or employee and to establish or to instruct the public body staff or negotiating agents concerning the position to be taken by or on behalf of the public body in negotiating the price and other material terms of a contract for the acquisition of real property by purchase located at 1128 South Main Street, Graham, North Carolina. I am not certain if there will be any action following closed session at this time. All right, guys and gals, it's 1243 at this point. I'm willing to continue on. What about the rest of the board? Yes. I'm good. I am because I, um... So the answer is yes, correct? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Everyone needs to continue on. I think so as yeah. well. All right. Commissioner Thompson has a commitment. She cannot break mid-afternoon, so that's why she would like to finish. I assume that does not take a vote. It does take a vote to go into closed session, does it not? Yes, I am asking for a motion for closed session. I'm going to go into closed session pursuant to... Fo following the county manager's report, I understand. You make the motion now, All right. but we won't actually go into closed session un until the manager has finished his report. Excellent. I'm making the motion. Second. second. We have two seconds. <laughs> so a third. <laughs> yep. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, unanimous. The only item I have is I wanted to recognize the uh, Department of Social Service Director Adrian Day. She's here with us today, and I believe this is her last yeah. county commissioner meeting. And uh, it's been just a pro pleasure and a privilege to work with Adrian. And uh, I can assure you that uh, in my experience with Adrian, she has kept the clients and her staffs well-being at heart and it's just been a joy to work with so couldn't miss a chance to say thank you Adrian thank you, absolutely. You thank you indeed thank absolutely you. thanks so much I appreciate it. that's all I have Mr. Chair all right we're in closed session discussion all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. we're done excellent Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on Local Gov TV. Please go to www.localgovtvnc.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. 
Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other other information about the county commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioners meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.